I can send it to you right now. And we're live. Welcome uh, to Football Life Super Bowl special here. I am Vince Mercandetti, joined alongside Henry Maldonado and Randy Hammond. How are you guys doing tonight? Doing well, Vince. Doing well. Henry, how about you, man? You're, you're uh, exciting weekend for you, obviously. Hey, you're like the man of the hour. I'm doing really fucking well. I'm happy. <laughs> I'm excited. Two more days, baby. Two more days. Are you in a Niners corner right now? <laughs> I am in uh, I'm in what's going to be the happiest place on the world in two more fucking days. You, you want to take us through that? What do we have going on in that corner over there oh. with the uh, ticket stubs and pictures? You have my little banner here. Okay. You have my uh, my autographed Montana jersey, um, courtesy of Joey, actually. Nice. You have my... 49er picture frame with a ticket stub from each of the five Super Bowls that we've been to um, that was purchased from my wife as a Christmas gift. The problem with that is she's going to have to get me a new one to include a sixth one. You're very confident, and we will... Uh, we'll just spoil the end of the show. Why, why are you just giving away the yeah, ending we, for it? I, I, think I, have, I have a feeling... You I met me yet? ...prediction's going to be. <laughs> I, <laughs> just a hunch. But... Yeah. Um, we uh we have a, a big show planned for everyone who's listening right now. Uh, we have we're going to obviously talk football, but before that, we're gonna have Erin Zook on. She's gonna join us about nine fifteen. She's gonna talk uh, some Canadian perspective, a little bit of socialism early on here, and then we'll get to, uh, <laughs> sorry, yeah, we'll sorry. get to, sorry. <laughs> a lot of apologizing the, the in those 15 minutes. And we're going to get to <laughs> Ortega joining us from Food Life. He's going to talk some food, Super Bowl spread, Super Bowl appetizer, Super Bowl entrees, Super Bowl hangover food, the whole nine yards we'll get yeah. to. No pun intended. And then we're going to get to, of course, discussing the game. We should have Matt Bushnell, uh, original member of Third Down. <laughs> and, um, or Deep Third, I'm sorry. So the last hour of the show, we will dedicate to the game itself. But uh, until then, we have some fun, fun-filled activities. And before all that, uh, Randy, I know that something close to your heart, uh, kind of on a more somber note, before we get to the festivities, why don't you take that away? Yeah, so um, last week was a pretty bittersweet one for uh, my childhood as a whole. Um, started off pretty well obviously us as Yankee fans got to celebrate the captain getting inducted to the baseball hall of fame uh pretty good day for us as Yankee fans regardless unanimous or not we were still pretty happy about that um and then on the deep Dirt football podcast last week we transitioned that into our football heroes which me talking about Eli Manning which several hours after we were live on Facebook Eli Manning announces that he is retiring which you know wasn't shocking it was kind of inevitable and you know, kind of expected, but nonetheless, guy was the quarterback of the Giants since I was 12 years old. Um, this last one is not um, nearly as simple as that. It's a lot deeper than that, and it's hard to talk about, honestly. It's kind of hard for me to even get the words out to even, like, think of what to say, um, but I grew up a Lakers fan, and uh, when I was young, I, you couldn't tell me anyone was a better basketball player than Kobe or Shaq. And uh, those two had a huge impact on my life. And if you have a team of, you're a fan of a team and, and, and you follow them when you're a kid, you're inspired by those players. And uh, I know Kobe Bryant probably wasn't the greatest person ever. He wasn't perfect. But um, to me, he was someone who I looked up to, uh, someone who was uh, the epitome of hard work, someone who showed that you are not successful in life unless you work hard. And to me, uh, I was pretty lazy throughout a lot of high school. And as I grew up, as I got older, I uh, took a lot of those values with me. And, um, you know, my heart truly broke on Sunday when I learned that uh, he, uh, he had died in a, a, in a helicopter crash with his, with his 13 year old daughter and uh, seven other people. And I, I, it's just something I never thought I would even have to say, let alone think about uh, Kobe Bryant felt like he was larger than life. He was, uh, a global icon in every sense of the, the term. And uh, you, you felt like he would be a guy who would be like, I'm going to jump out of this helicopter and stop the thing from crashing. And I'm going to prevent anyone from being hurt at all. He felt like a superhero. And I know that athletes aren't superheroes, but to me, he felt like someone who wasn't going to go out. You know, we, we are spoiled as sports fans, especially in the, in basketball where a lot of the legends of the sport are still around. And um, guys who you didn't think would even be like this far. My dad grew up 
loving Magic Johnson. Um, when Magic retired, everyone thought it was a death sentence because HIV at the time was uh, as a thing that no one thought you could you could be you know you could live with. Um, I talked to my dad on the phone, and something I didn't even think about was. I had I never would have thought in a million years that Magic Johnson would outlive Kobe Bryant. Um, it was a, a rough couple of days for me and my family. Like my my parents uh, watched me grow up being a Lakers fan, knew how much I, I I loved the Lakers and loved watching Kobe and and those teams. And I they, I think they would they, what they really my parents especially what were what they were upset about was they they watched me go outside and shoot a ball and and do a fadeaway right and and do a pump fake and post somebody up and do a a pivot and try to bank it off the, the backboard and, you know, do the, the underbite and like rip your Jersey up, like pull your Jersey up. Like you were proud. And they knew that I got a lot of that from Kobe and it, and a lot of like my competitiveness and my, 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 my want to be great. And my, 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 my want to win is, it comes from him a lot. I know I'm probably not speaking well right now. I'm sorry. It's kind of choking me up a little bit, but um, I, just, I, I, I won't talk too much more about this, but I, I want to end it by, by saying no celebrity death has ever affected me this way. And uh, it truly changed me forever. In the sense that I, I'm not living any day without love. And um, I'm not gonna go any day without telling somebody or someone when I leave them that I love them. And maybe I took that for granted before. Cause every day is sacred. Every day is truly a blessing and tomorrow is not given for any of us. So I love you guys. Thank you for letting me do this with you. And I don't take this for granted at all. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, you hit on, I think, a lot of what his biggest fans are feeling. And Henry, I know <coughs> we, we gave kind of our own tribute. I don't know if you guys, I'm sure you did. It's been all over Ball's life, but you saw the tribute that Staples Center is going to do tonight with the yeah. jerseys on the back yeah. of every single seat. Um, yeah. And I think this is the game, right, that they're donating everything to his charity with Vanessa. Um, and Vanessa, and this really pleased me on a personal note, First thing she does when she comes out on Instagram with her statement, which at the end of it is asking for privacy and rightfully so, is she opens a charity for the other victims, which I think was a big yeah. pressing point this whole week about, you know, well, what about everyone else on the plane? Like they weren't Kobe, they don't have the same means. And and that just speaks, I think, to the family as a whole. That is the first, yeah. first thing is, you know, they're going to take care of everyone. Um, and that was touching for me. And there's been a lot of things I think that's come out in this week that I didn't know about Kobe. And I, I like Kobe as a basketball player. Um, I've shared before, I, I went to school with Andrew Bynum. We weren't best friends or anything, but I was, the Lakers were my second team once the Knicks were eliminated in like late October. So I was rooting for them pretty much the, all of Kobe's prime, like that dynasty didn't bother me at all. And, um, and I still learned a lot of things, you know, about Kobe. I had no idea that he found religion, uh, which I really respect, by the way. I'm not a religious person, but I, I was struck by the fact that Kobe had this conversation with a priest. He becomes, you know, a practicing Catholic after that. No one ever found out. I mean, that was not a publicized story. It was not all over the sports media. You only find out after he dies. And why that means a lot to me is because he didn't go the Ray Lewis route where he did something really terrible and then he just throws this bullshit about like how how Christian he is now and how wonderful he is and how you know he he wasn't preachy about it and that tells me that he did it for himself and he really evolved over time and um and that's something on it from a human standpoint that I think we can all get get behind with Kobe so yeah you know, th those have been my takeaways I grieving just like everyone else but that that yeah. stuff really stuck with me this week yeah, and, and I'm not a parent, but um, I, I know how proud he was to be a father of those four girls. And I, I just can't help but to think about in that moment what it must have been like for him to know that, you know, it, it really wasn't going to be OK. You know, yeah. that, that's like the most heartbreaking part of the whole thing to me. Uh, I, I, it's hard for me to speak about. I mean, Henry, you're you're a proud father of, of two beautiful kids. And, you know, that that's probably the most relatable part for a lot of this is like you could not imagine what that must have felt like. Yeah, I touched on it um, earlier this week. I think for me, that's what that's what hurt me the most, knowing that as a father, you do what you're supposed to do to protect your children. And in that moment, there was nothing he could do. Um, yeah. Like you said, you know, if anyone could stop a helicopter, it'd be Kobe, you know. Um, yeah. But, you know, in, in, in true Kobe fashion, and, and he, 
he was a competitor to the end. I don't think we'll see a, a death as big as this. You know, Kobe, even in death, is going to be more competitive than anyone else and how he goes out. You know, Kobe, um, he touched a lot of people. And, and you know, Vince touched on uh, Vanessa Bryant's uh, social media life. And, and she opened up her page and made it public. Um, and that, you know, I think I told you guys privately, touched me because you go on and you see a lot of the videos that are, you know, people are starting to, to leak or not leak, but, you know, get from her page, you know, uh, Kobe Bryant was mimicking the, the dirty dance lift with his, you know, daughter off the counter. You know, those are moments that are awesome that, you know, she opened up to the world for the world to see that side of him, which we often didn't. Anything we saw with Kobe Bryant always had to do with basketball. And, you know, she opened up a platform for us to see Kobe Bryant, you know, the family man, the father, and, and that's pretty important. And she's still making those strides while she's grieving as a mother and as a wife. So, you know, hats off to her as well. And, and, and Randy, you know, that was uh, really awesome of you. And I think you did a great job. I think we all know personally how much Kobe means to you and, and you did an amazing job there. So thank you. I mean, I, I appreciate it, man. I, it's, it's, I'm not, I don't want to, I didn't know him personally, obviously. Um, it's not as serious as, you know, I lost a family member, some, someone close to me, but the impact he had on my life cannot be understated. Uh, I think that we all can relate to idolizing someone who we do not know who still has an impact on our life. So uh, a lot of, we can learn a lot of life values, life lessons from sports. And uh, I think he was a big part of that for a lot of us. Yeah. How, how many generations are going to be doing, you know, Kobe, you know, I mean, it's, <laughs> I mean, everyone who ever threw something in the trash, man, always. Yeah. And he's a cool it, name. Like, it's not simple. Like Michael Jordan, it's a cool name. Like Kobe Bryant, like exactly. Michael Jordan is a plain name. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like, you know, Kobe's a cool name. Like, I don't know if you'll ever have another person like that. Yeah. It's uh, it has definitely, I think been a weird time. <laughs> For New Yorkers, you meant yeah. I mean, you mentioned too. We had the Eli thing. We had the uh, Jeter thing in the same week, which uh, that was a closure on my teenage years, basically. Yeah. Um, and then it, now it's a weird time for California because on one yeah. hand you've got as sad of a tragedy, maybe the most iconic, you can argue the most iconic living Californian athlete right now. Who I is, don't think the impact that on Los Angeles that he had can be uh, like it, it, yeah, it truly. I, it was so large. Like he was, as if much there was a God of I Southern California, is, he was it. I think he means as much to that city as I think any athlete in any city mm -hmm. that you can draw a parallel to. Uh, the I don't think there's any doubt. And, else. Guys, and on the other side, you got people like Henry in, in California who, yeah, San Francisco's in the Super Bowl. I mean, what a weird, what a weird yeah. week for that state right now. Uh, I know, you know, LA and San Francisco are not like right next door to each other, but still same state. It's like as happy as you can be and as sad as you can be at the same time. Um, yeah. Part of me makes, the, part of that revelation makes me want to root for the Niners. I'm not going to, especially after Henry just put <laughs> Bang Bang Niner Gang as his name. Uh, <laughs> but if I was maybe a nicer human being like that would touch me enough to make me want the Niners to win, but I'm just not going to do that. And right on time... We are joined in like, downtown Toronto Hi. by Canadian correspondent Aaron Zuccolo. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing, are, I'm doing well. Are you spinning? What was that? Yeah, that was my... Uh, oh. That is... See, Canadians, like, traction's just not a concern. Oh, it snows all the no. time. <laughs> no, there's snow, too. Look, not a concern. Yeah, that's Toronto amazing. has never looked better. It's yeah. a duster. Very good. Well, welcome, Aaron. Thank you for joining Hello. us. Hello. I know that uh, you had a busy day. <laughs> I did. I am walking home now through a park, so enjoy. Awesome. Canadian mm -hmm. parks. What a treat. This is dedication. Dedication yeah. to the brand. <laughs> this we is dedication. I am leaving my work, and I'm right on the podcast. We wanted to ask you, because we never get this opportunity. Like, you know, Randy and Henry and I, we, we've tried to avoid Canadians all our lives, but... We uh, we wanted to ask you a few questions about the Super Bowl because you know this is our everyone cares about the Super Bowl. No one really right. knows what's going on for Canadian sports, so we want to ask you a few questions and kind of get your perspective. Okay, shoot. Awesome. Well, first thing is, you know, I'm sure you guys know of the Super Bowl. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, like you're not that far. <coughs> no. Um, is it a big deal? I mean, is this like Thanksgiving? 
what, like our Thanksgiving or your yeah, Thanksgiving? The most important one. Yeah, the Canadian. Well, Thanksgiving. it's a big deal. People like bars have like specials and like people have parties and stuff. Like yeah, it's okay. a big deal. That's a thing. Yeah. It's a thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's totally a thing. Is there like rooting interest? Like, you know, you will take you, for example. I mean, I know you don't watch a ton of football, right? No. You, well, yeah. American football. Right. Because there's that other league. Um, yeah. It's only, there's only American football. <laughs> yeah. She could be talking about soccer. It, like, what what you? Oh, no. To, to clarify, CFL, CFL. Your, we're talking about football, not soccer, just, just so you know. Yeah. yeah um, I'm aware. You have a rooting interest? Like, how do Canadians decide what American football team to root for? Uh, really, it's based on money. We just bet. <laughs> but, like, oh. this year, I'm, like, in the bang, bang, niner gang, though. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Do you guys right. split the money oh, evenly geez. if you win? Of course, communism. Right. That's what I figured, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... Okay, so so you're you've got the Niners now. Your husband, yeah. your husband, a gambler? Are you a gambler? Yeah, we bet like twenty bucks. He's taking Kansas City because I took the Niners. Oh, okay. So you're so yeah. the wow, you a, literally are splitting the winnings like equal. Well, it's so all you're betting the same with money. each other. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> that's how Canadians bet. They're like, I'll bet yeah. you twenty dollars. All right, I'll bet you twenty dollars. The opposite. Yeah, that's like the we most have, Canadian thing I've ever heard. Yeah, but yeah. We yeah. Care and how it works. Money. So we have other bets, but let's not let's not go there. Okay. A different podcast. Yeah. Not this one. That's not get controversial. No controversy. Do you bet every year? Absolutely. Okay. So this is there's no like personal connection. It's just this is the Super Bowl. It's what you do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because we want to like feel part of the crew, you know? Right. Oh, you the wanna... Americans are doing something. Why don't we do it? Yeah. You want to yeah. fit in with actual countries. I understand that. Yeah. yeah. Um... I just came from the communist factory. That's where I was working today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They just like create you in labs overnight and just yeah. force you across Toronto streets. So all this behind me is an illusion. It's not real. What's your Super Bowl yeah. food like? Poutine and Tim Hortons, like yeah. What's uh, it's, your it's, it's called tutsin. Oh, is that is how you say it. Tutsin. I've always pronounced it poutine. Everyone does. Oh, when yeah. You're, yeah, it's right? poutine. There's the e at the end of it, isn't there? Well, yeah, but it's en français. Oh, okay. yeah. oh, je m'excuse. Oh. Um, yeah, so one of my favorite poutines is um, buffalo like chicken tenders tossed in hot sauce in Putin. Is Putin just like a like a gravy or? No, put, Putin is like the fries, the, the curds, fries. and the gravy. Yeah, dip, the dip, whole dip. the whole thing. What you're saying is the ruthless dictator of Russia, Putin. Right. Yeah. yeah. Know what I mean? He meddles in our affairs. He doesn't. Well, he allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly, I was just gonna say that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Save so, that for the pop culture podcast. Yeah, right. Yeah, we're trying to dabble in everything here. The Putin, though, <laughs> is that like just a celebratory meal in general, or is it just something that tastes good and that's what? That's goes- just delicious, and we all love it. Got it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Good. Um, you know what we don't have up here? No. This is this is the big shebang. We don't get your Super Bowl commercials. I was going to ask. We don't that. get them. Very what you, rarely. What do you get? We, so, they just, so we watch the American feed because it's all the American feed. And then as soon as it comes to a commercial, it just like you might see the first like 10 seconds and then they cut to the Canadian commercials. Oh, wait, they even tease better commercials? Yeah. Shitty yeah. Canadian one? Whereas like one Super Bowl, we got one American one. It was like the, the Doritos with if pigs could fly and that was it. Wow. <laughs> That's okay, shit. Is it like a black market there to like stream the American? Yeah. So then when, the, then when like, we're all like, oh God, check out this YouTube channel. I was like, oh, they're all here. Not accessible in your area. Okay. Because they look the Budweiser. Not, can't get it. Yeah, they even oh, lock man. us out on YouTube. Communism. That's crazy. That is, that's crazy to me. Aaron, I, yeah. I am the closest to you uh, proximity you wise. I, I'm, I'm still seven hours away in Albany, but um, I, I would assume that you're in Toronto that there's mainly Bills fans there. Am I wrong about that? Uh, I would say it's a range. We go to Bill's games because it's very, very close. Yeah. What is it, two hours or so? Yeah, like an hour 45 to the border. Yeah. Do, do you, uh, do you, you probably don't remember when they made four Super Bowls in a row, do you? Is that or... Jim Kelly? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Remember when they what, were going to bring the Bills to, to Toronto, Fitty Fitty? I remember well, that. Well, yeah, I do remember that as well. Um, yeah. Do, do, you, do you remember Toronto going nuts for the Bills at that time? or? or no? Oh, yeah, because we were really excited because we thought we were going to get, like, an NFL team. 
and they would play at the dome where the Jays play, which is where they played. And then I don't know, things got awkward. But when the Bills did play here, it was sold out. Really? Yeah. Very yeah. Demand. Yeah. People from here, like my husband, with his friends, will buy Bills season tickets and then they go. Oh, that's adorable. I was so cute, right? So you said there's a black market for like American viewership of Super Bowl, which would get the Super Bowl commercials. Yeah, it's the Super Bowl commercials. We don't get them. I'm gonna get hit by a car. Jaywalking. Yeah, don't watch the lookout. You can only break okay. the walls. Well. Henry with the plug. I love it. See, like Always if I break solid. my bones, it's no problem. I'm just saying that there's uh, for everything. Yeah. <laughs> if you have Wi-Fi. If you have Wi-Fi in Canada, Aaron, then Henry's got yeah. a product for you. <laughs> but even still, they just cut them out. Wow, that's wow. horrible. Yeah. The, the commercials are like fifty percent of what's good of the Super Bowl. I know. And and the and the, like the little thing they do in the middle. What's that called? The Half singing. Time. Half time show. Yeah. There we go. There you go. <laughs> well, My neighbor. Well, speaking Half speaking time. of that's that's a good transition. Are you excited for Jennifer Lopez and Shakira? Absolutely. Do you have this, a favorite halftime show that you can remember? Like Prince singing in the rain, Purple Rain. That's it. That's yeah. the goat. That's, that's the goat. I don't. Yeah. That is, though, I don't think anyone could beat that. It was raining, purple rain. Raining, purple Prince. rain in the rain. It, it doesn't get better That's than good. Yeah. You can't write that. You can't no, write I that. Really I mean, I loved I, the Britney Spears and NSYNC one, even though at the time I didn't like either one of them. I just thought it was. Oh, wait. Crazy. The nipple, too. Nipple Gate. Yeah. Yep. Nipple Gate was bomb. That was my senior year of high school, and that was like prime time for a nipple gate. Yeah. And then that's when they started doing um, delayed, right? Like delays on live things. Yeah. 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 I, I, because I, of Jackson's I boob. I that's enjoyed. when they also started having old men do the halftime show. Yeah. So if they got right. the nipples out, it would be gross. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> old white men. That was like the coming <laughs> <end. laughs> I enjoyed the Beyonce halftime show. I would have. She killed it. it. That was I good. Loved it more if we would have completed the greatest comeback ever. Nah. Lady Gaga was Greg good. Roman. Go to hell, Greg Roman. I forgot that that was the same Super Bowl. Yes, and then you was. had the blackout, too. That was a yep. weird Super Bowl. Yeah. I like Tom Petty's. I mean, he just did the Giants being the undefeated Patriots. So I'll always love that one. But. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, what's her face sang the national anthem, I think, to the first one? Jennifer Hudson, right? I don't know. I'm oh, pretty... I don't remember that part. Who's I don't, singing I don't think the I... national anthem this year? Demi Lovato. Uh, Demi Lovato. Demi oh, Lovato, that's yeah. Henry's girl. Yes, is she Canadian? Yeah. She kind of sounds Canadian. She's, she's Puerto Rican. Canadian. We don't we don't claim her. Oh, I'll claim her. She's Puerto Rican. I'll take her. No, Henry, yeah, Henry's, I'll take Henry's her. claiming her. I'm making shit up. Everyone who's great is Puerto Rican, but <laughs> so all right. What about the puppy bull? Oh, Jeter. Is that, is that Jeter a... wins. No, no, because the puppy bull happens during the Super Bowl. I can't change it. Oh, but it's a different channel. I can't change the TV. Oh, know what oh, I mean? Wait, there is a lingerie <laughs> bowl. Yeah, what about the, do they allow, like, scantily clad women in Canada? I think that's my life. So, okay. you know, as a lady, okay. I think I think that's my lifestyle, so I don't really need to see it. Is that fair? <laughs> what about your husband? Oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, it's, it's been a long time. We're over it. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Um, Okay. Well, Aaron, I, I haven't looked up any if anyone in the Super Bowl is from Canada at all, but uh, in your local news stations, are they going nuts every time there is a player potentially in the Super Bowl that is from is Canadian? Anytime there is a Canadian who does anything, it's a big deal <laughs> because we are a small group of folks. There's like two million of you in the country, right? I think there's like at least six, six it's people fun, total. Man. When is that right. a parade? Yeah, I don't I'm know. Just gonna bring Harry Walker into this. But. There's one hockey store in the mall for every Canadian citizen. See hockey, that that's a big deal. I I went to Montreal in 2010, and there were six, no less than six hockey stores in the mall. Just yeah. hockey, not like a sports store that had hockey. It was just hockey, and I was like, this is right. Like, yeah, you guys love hockey. I think maybe more than we love football, which yeah. is very uh, important to do. Like they will the beat you up here. They yeah. will beat your face in if you are in the wrong jersey in the wrong place. And yeah, the case sorry. I made fun of me because I was wearing a Nordique shirt, which I didn't know was so taboo. Yeah, because you're in Montreal. Yeah. I, yeah. Right. No hockey rivalry. Duh. God, Ben's is stupid. Rivalry. Yeah. <laughs> God, how did you not know that, you idiot? <laughs> what are the Leafs? Are they just enemies with everyone? Yeah, pretty much. Well, Toronto's enemies with everyone. They all hate us. Yeah. 
That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I guess because we have everything. So that's a problem for people. Mm. Well, Toronto's checking like, my mail. Nice. It, it's uh, Toronto's like the metropolitan like city, right? Like, the, is it's, that uh, like yeah. the New York City of Canada? Correct. But it's more like Chicago. Okay. Like the like feel. A very small and fair. Yeah, bad pizza. Area. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's not so, as good as New York, but it's not it's not the best, but it's not the worst. Like what would Vancouver be? Is that like LA or I don't know. I don't know what happens out there. I think they smoke a lot of weed though. They're very yeah. relaxed people. Vancouver is Vegas. <laughs> no, it's not that fun. It's like uh like Oregon. You think the Super Bowl's made it that far? That far west? They absolutely know about the Super Bowl. Whether they're interested or not. I don't yeah. know. Because the CF, CFL is a big deal here, right? Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Do people care about it? That's well, amazing. Old boomers care about it. Oh, they care about a lot well, of stuff. Yeah. yeah. One guy here wore um, shorts for 20 years until Winnipeg won the, C- the I, CFL championship. I, I read that story. I read that story. That was amazing. Sir, you live in Winnipeg. Make it that far south for you? You know what we call Winnipeg here? Winter peg. This guy's wearing yeah. shorts. That's yeah. creative because it's cold yeah. there, right? Yeah, it's freezing here. It's freezing right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's Ireland. Freezing here too. Here's my Canadian story for you, Aaron. Okay. I can't wait. I, yeah, I used to work for a high end baby furniture company. Okay. And Canadians have more money than us, it seems. And they used to buy this. Like, we had a ton of Canadian customers, one of which was this very nice lady, single mom in Manitoba, Winnipeg. Oh God! And she was trying to order the. I'll never forget this. It cracked me up for so long. She was trying to order like a winter cover for her stroller that we sold, which was like seventy five dollars, such a ripoff. And she w- could not do it in white <laughs> because the snow got so high that she wouldn't be able to see the stroller. see her kid. Oh like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, Holy shit! Like what the hell's going on where you live? Yeah, we call it winter peg for a reason. Yeah, I guess so. Did yeah. You, uh, did you see the latest Bachelor episode by any chance? I don't watch The Bachelor. That's why you'll be <laughs> our guest. What are, we, what are we talking about here? Uh, they, <laughs> I don't know. They had a football, I don't know. They had a football challenge, and uh, I think riding on the on the wave of the Super Bowl, and all the women like beat the shit out of each other, and then he like gives a rose to someone who didn't play. It made no sense. Like missing a tooth. Here's your rose. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They got pissed too. She's like, I have bruises from like trying to compete for you, and then you give the rose to someone who wasn't even there. <laughs> Find These someone else. I wonder about. So, yeah. uh, Aaron, question for yes. you here. Yes. Uh, so you and uh, you and all your uh, your friends are gathering around watching the Super Bowl Sunday with your your Putin. If yeah. I said that correctly. <laughs> Putin. Yeah. Go on. Like, now, we beer. Which which case of Canadian beer is in the fridge? Is it Molson? Is it Labatt? What is it? That's trash you guys drink. Ooh. Well, that's all. I mean, isn't it we all don't, that? No, we what don't drink it? that. Craft? Well, does Toronto, does Toronto have, like, sophisticated craft beer? Yeah. Toronto has, well, um, like, breweries. give me some names. Amsterdam. Yeah, what you... So there's okay. Amsterdam Blonde. That's really good. Then there's Mill Street. Organic. Delicious. I'm out. And uh, there, so. There's such a bad thing as an Amsterdam Blonde? What, do you not know? Oh, oh! <laughs> no, there isn't. Yeah, Amsterdam does like a, a cornucopia of beers. That's what people would get. Probably craft, probably something craft. Or you get like just a, a case of Canadian, cheap and cheerful. So yeah. I need to send you some coquito for next week, but I got you. Well, I'm allergic to coconut, so don't kill me. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Aaron, I, I right, feel boys. like you're probably outside of your door now, so we won't hold you anymore, but do you have a Super Thank Bowl you. prediction as far as a, a score and a winner? Yes, I'm going bang, bang, Niner gang, 50 you don't to, have to say seven. That. I'm it's saying three. it every single time. Seven? 50 to seven? Man, yeah. that's rude. Wait, yeah. what's that score again? 50, 50 to seven. seven. Yeah. 50 to I, seven? Yeah. I think you're pandering to someone in this room right now, and I'm not sure who it is, but I don't know. Um, it could be anybody, we, really. If we win 50 to 7, I'm sending this for free. <laughs> and then I can see the commercials. There you go. Thanks, I'm guys, for having me. Wow. 50 to 7. Thank you, Aaron. Aaron, bye. 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 And Aaron Zucolo, our Canadian correspondent for the Super Bowl. Um, 50 predicting to 7. That I, I want on your side, Henry. What? Sorry. Canada's on your side. 
I I, I want what she's drinking. <laughs> yeah. Well, it sounds like it sounds like it's not the shit that I'm drinking because sounds way better than what I'm drinking. I, whatever she's <laughs> drinking, token or anything else, it's <laughs> fifty to seventy. It'll be a shitty Super Bowl, but I will be happy from start to end. Yeah, you and Roberto, I'm blocking. If that's the case, that's yeah, absolutely. Cool. We should have had her on the analysis portion of the show. I would be really, <laughs> yeah, to see that breakdown. Although I think I win a square if the score is fifty to seven, so I I'll take say, it. That's a, good square, that's a good square score. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. All right. Well, we are waiting on uh, Johnny. Did you see Johnny's comment regarding <laughs> the Amsterdam blonde? Yeah. 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 Yep. Got to be a little less horny and a little more on the show. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> or mix them. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> so we're about to get into here the food segment. Um, Henry, you know, we can start with you while we're kind of waiting here. What do you, first of all, what are your Super Bowl plans as someone with a team? <laughs> I'm staying home. Okay. So I can either sulk after I throw everyone out. Good plan. Or I can recover after I crack this. So what is that? Is that just champagne? It is champagne. Will you okay. let your 18 year old son have a celebratory glass of champagne if the Niners win? <sighs> do it do it i will let him make that call oh okay oh well he's doing it then yeah i think i know the answer <laughs> I think I know this decision. yeah well we have uh, oh, we got big j on the line here yeah it looks like right on time right in queue here yeah <laughs> hello johnny oh, oh my goodness hey hey hey, hey. Yeah, hey, hey. <laughs> i need one of those hats man i need one of those hats <laughs> Chef Johnny's in the house. Let's start with that. Where do you get a hat like that? Well, to be honest with you, this year I got this when it comes with an apron, and this from my daughter. My 15-year-old daughter gave it to me for Christmas this year. That's awesome. So, That's awesome. Perfect fit, man. Perfect fit. As you can see, I got my flag up, man. I'm representing my boys, man. You know, we we ain't been in the Super Bowl for how long, man? Since I'm 47, I ain't seen it yet. So, so fuck it, man. They cut me, I bleed green. That's all. That's that's all I can say. Hey, but, uh, you want right? to talk about hey, tell you what, man. Give me a kiss, Susie. Hey, Aaron had me excited with all that damn bear names. I was like, hey. <laughs> this shit right here. Hey. <laughs> so anyways, what's going on, guys? Nothing much. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. This is Johnny from the lab in case you're in football life and not yes. in our food life, food travel life. Um, Johnny, your show is every other Wednesday or every Wednesday? Well, so far it's been every, every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Uh, Eastern. Uh, you know, my, my partner in crime, uh, Chef Matt, is on the West Coast. So, so all those uh, who are living on the West Coast and want to check it out, please do, man. I mean, it's fun. It's going to get better, man. We're going to be doing a lot of more uh, cooking on, on the show and stuff. That's coming. We're working that in. And I think this coming Wednesday, we're going to work that in. So. <laughs> You know, pay, you know, you teach y'all something, you know. Yeah, you're uh, Valentine's Day is coming, man. You gotta cook for the girls, you know, you gotta cook for your girl, man. <laughs> well, I, I'm hoping that you can teach us something here today, Johnny, because Oh football, yeah, yeah. Uh, Most to, definitely. Because this Super Bowl is... Sunday, besides Thanksgiving, is the biggest food day of the oh. year. And if you're a football fan, especially it's probably the biggest food day of the year. So on a day like Super Bowl Sunday, what are you chefing up for for your okay, uh, party? Well, I'm going actually, uh yeah, we're going to a um in-laws party who has a big projection screen. So I'm personally going to make, I, well, listen, traditionally is wings, beer, everybody knows that. I like to mix it up a little bit. I'm making a taco bar this year because it feeds a lot of people. So I will be having three different meats, which would be kind of, you know, uh, pork, you know, I'm, I'm doing it a big, but it's going to feed about 50 to 80 people. So I'm going to, <laughs> yeah, the party's going to be pretty big, you know, all family members and stuff. But you know, everybody's bringing something, but not this year, but I'm doing is I'm throwing a penny in the oven, a roasted pork in English for you guys and translating, but I'm doing a, a couple of pennies. I'm turning that into the meat and then I'm going to do, you know, chicken and I'm going to do uh, beef. So I'm doing a taco bar this year. And you know, there's a lot of other choices you can make it when you, when you, you want to feed a lot of people. So, and yeah. then they're easy too. a lot of tricks guys. You don't have to stay over slave over the, uh, uh, or in the kitchen, man. You can throw something in the crop pack, like a nice roast loin. Shred that up, make sliders. I mean, there's a lot of options you have, but uh, that's where I'm going. I'm going to taco route this year, man. You know, why yeah, not? So, Johnny, if that's your 
meal that you bring to anyone's house, you can come to my house anytime, brother. <laughs> yeah, I come with the table, with the setups, they're all professional, by the way. I'm you can come to my game. house anytime if that's how you're cool. visiting, brother. And uh, on the side of the taco bar, I also do, you know, of course, traditional nacho bar. I have three, um, oh my three God. big warmers where you have the cheese, the beef, and, you know, refried beans, whatever you like. But I also do, I, I incorporate, you know, I bring my own table too, you know, I set it up like I'm catering. And, you're gonna uh, make Joey move back to Florida. Hey, hey, Joey. Uh, you're gonna make Joey me come back to Florida. Joey knows where I live. <laughs> yeah, right, Joey, right. He's gonna rent a condo. <laughs> Joey knows where I live. He's always welcome. That's my boy, Joey. Joey's welcome here. He he dropped me off here one time. Johnny, how so, much meat is that? What was that? I am contractually obligated to ask this question, by the way. As <laughs> okay. What was that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's 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 your that's your section of the Yeah, I need to know how you much meat about meat, man. Go ahead. What kind of meat would you like to talk about? How how much meat or do you have to make to have to feed fifty to eighty? Uh, I go by pounds. So you know, a traditional penny would would run you a, a couple pounds, but you know, I go big on that. And then uh, you know, about five pounds of ground beef, and then chicken breast about uh, a good another five pounds. But everything's shredded. Remember, you shred everything. Everything yes, shredded. Yes, so it expands. Pounds. Yeah. So, and then I have my own warmers, and I'm not talking about your traditional with the gas warmers in the bottom. Mine's are electric. Mine's a little high. You're, you're gonna see Vince slowly sliding away from the desk. You know? <laughs> yeah. so, Don't be that a little excited. excited. Hey, Vince, like, oh damn, I got the meat sweats over here. Don't get the meat sweats, man. Don't get the meat sweats. Oh, that sounds <laughs> awesome. That's a lot. But uh, yeah, I go, you know, listen, you can also do like dips too. You know, I, I probably will make with the extra chicken, I will make a buffalo chicken, <laughs> buffalo chicken dip. Everything I'm talking about, by the way, I will go ahead and type in the recipes on some of these things for anybody yeah. who wants to try it, man. Give it a shot. Yeah. But, That's a great idea. And, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, go ahead. I was just going to say, I'm glad you mentioned dips because my go-to every Super Bowl Sunday is what I call crack dip because it's so addicting. It's essentially just buffalo chicken dip, but um, I, I, I mean, I make it in the crock pot. It just sits there all day. Oh, yeah. It smells it's so good in the in the house all day long. And that, you know, throw some bacon in there. And I mean, you can, you really can't go wrong. And it's, it. you know, however many people. So do you add, do you uh, add, do you add a couple of uh, uh, ranch in there? Yeah. I, I mean, you okay. can go the blue cheese route if you prefer that, but I go the ranch route. Ranch, I, I, yeah. Oh, ranch. Yeah. I, I like the taste of ranch better. Um, I, I use a rotisserie chicken because it's easy. I can pull yeah, it apart. Yeah. I can shred it. I, I mean, do. depending on how many people, I can get two rotisserie chickens. But I mean, I put it in the crock pot. It cooks all day. It smells amazing. And it's so easy to do. Hey, try this next time. Go ahead and grab your crock pot. Throw in about six or seven chicken breasts. Put all your seasoning. Let that cook for like four hours. Shred Take two forks, up. shred that up, and then make then make your dip. Try that. I mean, I, I mean, I, I can do that Sunday because I have yet to oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Happen, so. and give that another two hours with the with the with the ingredients. And just that, by, that's how by I make. Thing. That's how I make the chicken for chicken tacos. Just like that. Throw them in. Just the like that. Yeah. Cooker, yeah. Cut them up. Simple stuff. And of course, your traditional wings. Everybody makes sure when you cook for a lot of people. I'm not making wings this year. I think someone else is covering that. But what I when I did have to cover the wings, you got to bake them because you're making a lot of people. You're making for a lot of people. Put a lot of you know you can put fifty. I got a big tray, so I can put up at least thirty per per uh, thirty wings per tray. Oven, then in a the bowl, then sauce them, and it's more healthier too. You're not frying them all day. And trust me when I tell you, it tastes a lot better. But that's just Johnny, ideas. I, ideas what for to cook for a lot of people. You know what I mean? I assume Sean Gorman from Rack Ruby is going to be there, right? Oh yeah, he's coming of course. <laughs> yeah, Sean. Uh, Sean, yeah, Sean. I'm going to have to dock his podcast pay, knowing knowing how well he's going to eat. Oh no, yeah, Sean. Sean definitely gonna be there. Like I said, it's a family a family event. Um, it's at my son's house this time. My uh, son's wow. so. But, so Johnny, uh, I, I'm ho I'm hosting a party this year, and I, I mean, typically I do have people over. Um, so I know what that day is like for me, prepping wise for food and drinks and everything, and you know, cleaning to make sure the presentation's all all good. But I mean, you're you're talking about pounds of meat that you have and <laughs> the amount of people that you are feeding. What's that day, and what's that? What are the days leading up to that like for you? Well, you know, I. I I focus more on when it comes to the cooking, catering for big parties. I focus on the little things the day before. For instance, in a taco bar, you have to get the diced tomatoes, the diced onions, the cilantro. I would do that the night before. Boom, boom, boom. Get it, you know, wrap it up, put it in the fridge. No worries. But yeah, when you wake up early in the morning, you know, my 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 roast pork. I actually done my penis. I do overnight. Also, a lot of people don't. I don't know. A lot of people take four or five hours. I actually put mine in at twelve at night at one eighty. All the way eight hours. Don't even worry about it. Just go out there and yeah. wrap it up at, at 180. 180 overnight. I don't know if you have 
make sure you got good uh, fire extinguishers just in case. You know what I'm saying? We go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's so, uh, those are the tricks. The tricks are to do the shortcuts the day before, and that's what I do. And I also have, a, 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 you know, I have, a, you know, everybody knows I have some kids. So, so they help out too. You know what I mean? I got a lot of hands. But when you know the meat, the does meat the is Super Bowl rival uh, like say Thanksgiving at all by any chance? What was that? The, does the Super Bowl rival as far as busyness to the Thanksgiving at all, or is it not quite as? What's the prep time on that? I uh, know, yeah, everybody. Well, you know, like I said, my kids, uh, you know, my my, my, older, my older kids are who are in the 20, 26, 25, 20 years old. They'll be there, and they they, oh, take, yeah, they take this competition. They take they take it to a competition, though. They like look what I made and look what I made, and I like, you know, yeah, it's 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 fun, man. You know, be creative. That biggest thing is to be creative. A lot of people, again, just go with the chicken wings and this. And I think my daughter, my two daughters are making six foot subs and stuff like that. You know, they create, they order the bread and then, they, you know, they make big subs, six foot each. And, you know, it's just, you know, it, it's a fun time. Super Bowl is like Thanksgiving for us. It's, I'm not going to lie to nobody. It's Super Bowl, it's, um, we were just talking about it today. And I, I kept telling them, I like, my daughter was like, oh, but Jaden, my grandson, Jaden has a soccer game Sunday. I've been telling you this since you were born. Super Bowl Sunday, I'm not going anywhere. Hey, look who's there. Hey, hey, hey. hey there he goes. <laughs> hey, and I try to tell him, Super Bowl Sunday, I ain't going nowhere, but I'll be in the kitchen cooking for the party. So, but then, okay. All right. Now, now, now game time, uh, you're using, you're eating tacos and stuff the whole time, or are you munching out other snacks? No, no. You know what I do is, once I set, listen, once I set everything up, I try to, I try to, Make sure everything stays clean, but you know, once once the drinks get going and I start eating, <laughs> I get my part. It's time for me to have a great time. So I'm with the drinks and having a great time, and let everybody else deal with the rest. But I did my part. Once I finish and I take the apron off, I'm a fan. I'm you know, hey, let's go, let's do this. Uh, it's it's you know, let's see what everybody's talking about. But let me see. You have to enjoy the fruits of your own labor, Johnny. So that's, oh, no, I'm no, glad I, to hear that you're doing. No, that. Dude, half the time, hey, no lie, man, half the time. I'm already full before I serve because I'm I'm picking at it, you know. What I mean? I'm making a taco to get me through the day. Yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, oh no, yeah. But uh, this year, you know, last year, no, what was it? Two years ago, I made a hot dog bar because I actually own a rotisserie thing that they have at, um, at the Seven Elevens, the machines. Yeah. Oh wow. We used to have a Seven Eleven, anyways. Big story, long story, but we used to have that machine. I still have it in the attic, so you know. 50 hot dogs on the damn thing, let it roll, and then I do all the sides, the chili, the cheese, and all that on the side, and everybody goes with the buns, and everybody grabs and goes, man. Where were you yeah. when I was in college, Johnny? <laughs> that was perfect for like a dorm apartment. You know, working for Disney so long, so for so long that I, that's all I know how to do is cook bulk, like yeah. cater. Yeah. I, I don't know how to cook a little bit, I, you know. <laughs> My grandfather was like that because of World War II. He can only he can only cook in enormous portions because he had to feed a ship. <laughs> hey, I'm serious. It, it's almost like uh, like when I hear everybody's dinner, everybody got a little Tupperware container to go to work with the next day too. Here you go. There you go. Here's what you eat now, and here's what you eat tomorrow. There you go. Well, let me but, ask you this, Johnny: If yeah. the Jets were ever in the Super Bowl, would you still be rolling? 50 to 80 people deep or would you want to be like home alone with like you know your closest confidants i didn't catch the first part what was the I first said, if if the jets did ever make the super bowl are you home alone or are you still rolling in like this enormous party i'm painting the inside of my house green <laughs> i'm not gonna lie to you i i i am uh i'm definitely gonna buy i'm gonna get that catered i don't think i'm gonna do it i'm gonna my nerves will be so freaking Oh man, I only man. It's uh, like that. I, I can remember the two times where the AFC back-to-back -back championship games we were in, uh, when Mark Sanchez was the quarterback. Uh, yeah. I don't know when Rex Ryan. Um, those two, the, I had parties those two times, and uh, I didn't do a motherfucking thing. That's why I didn't have it in me, man. You, hi, you hire Rob. You hire Rob to cater that shit, man. Oh yeah. no! I, I, oh man! I, I think what we did. I think I did. I think I ordered nothing but big, big ass subs, uh, eight foot subs, and just I bought store bought stuff, put it out, and I was just trying to get the win, man. I was just hoping we got the win. I got to be curious. I'm going to ask Matt the same question because I remember, and Randy, I told you this when you came to visit uh, the first Giants Patriots Super Bowl, which is the first <coughs> one I ever saw where they were actually in it. Um, 
I like couldn't breathe, let alone be around people, let, let alone drink or like eat a lot. So yeah. I totally get it. Like I don't, I would be shocked if there was someone who's a diehard fan of a team and they're like, I'm going to go to a giant party and my team's in it. You know, uh, I got something for that one there. My wife, my in-laws are all New York Giant fans, hardcore. And um, with the first Super Bowl Sunday uh, with the Giants, <coughs> uh, I mean, I've always wanted an 80 inch screen, you know, big TV and all that. And I don't, you, know, you talk to wife, your body. Oh, we don't need it. We don't need it. I swear to God, and everything I love that, that that's football Sunday. We had an 80 year screen for her party. <laughs> yeah. I swear to God, man. I had man, but you know, and I I was doing the cooking for her and our team. But yeah, yeah, man. The Giants here. Uh, we're you know we're Jets and Giants in this house. But yeah, she got lucky because I cooked for her party. But I, uh, you know. And we're gonna do. I think I wore a Tiki Barber jersey for yeah, thing. I yeah, remember. I nice. Better than better than anything Patriots related on that day. Yeah, that's um, dedication. Carrie. Yeah, no, I um nothing Patriot. Hey, listen, I was born in Massachusetts, so my whole family's Patriot. Uh, I'm sorry. The, I'm the only. I call myself a green sheep. I'm the green sheep of the family. Father, <laughs> that, brother, I like that. Brothers, sisters, everybody's Patriots. Uh, so can can we sign the petition to make uh, Chef Johnny take over Fireman Ed as the chief fan I, of the uh, Jets? I, somebody had told me to do something like that, dress up as a chef uh, and, and uh, go to the games and stuff like that. But uh, Fire, Fireman Ed is a fraud. You know that, right? I was about to say, Fireman it. Ed lost a lot of points, man. <laughs> well, you know, well, Randy, to go to the Fireman Ed thing, you know, at first everybody didn't understand what he was going through as a uh, – for where fans were to blame him for things that were going on the field and for him to go just use the bathroom. Well, that's ridiculous. Get yeah. beers thrown on him and because, you know, you know, no matter what, if we're winning or losing, he's doing his J-E-T-S, Jets, 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 and they're hanging on him. Oh, why are you so happy? But why are you so positive? You know, the man gets shitted on at the stadium all the time. So I don't blame yeah. him. He, you know, he's definitely a super fan. I've actually met the man a few times. He actually knows me by my first name. Cause we wow. got <laughs> Johnny or Chef? You fed him 19 pounds of wings. Oh. <laughs> what happened? I said, because you fed him 19 pounds of wings. Oh, oh, actually, I go to the tailgate experience, the NFL ta tailgate experience. And um, every, you know, when the, the Jets come to Florida or I, I go to one game every year in New York and then I go to the Florida game. And there's a thing called the, the game day tail experience, game day tailgate. Yeah. The NFL and through a buddy that runs it um, that I know. And Fireman, because most of the Jeff fans go all together, Fireman is like the guy he hires. And so, you know, I see him every time I go to the game. You know, I'm gonna, last time I hear, I told him, gave my phone, he gave my son, a, called my son on FaceTime, said, what's up to him? That's awesome. You know, that's, cool. that's like a free cameo or whatever uh, the celebrities are doing. For now. real. Yeah, it really yeah. is. That's uh, awesome. Yeah, maybe we'll let him on the podcast one day. Who knows? Yeah, let's let's call Fireman Ed up. I'd love yeah, you know, <laughs> Randy and Matt could talk to him. Uh -huh. Hey, what's it? Joey says if the Jets ever make the Super Bowl, he'll be at my my party. Yeah, yeah all right, it's done. It's in stone, buddy. <laughs> I think I, 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 I want to come to any, any of our Super Bowl parties. Guys, hey, Joe Rijo invited himself. If you guys in. ever come to Florida? Well, Vince is already here, but every anytime you guys, if we can get a meet up here in Florida, that would be awesome, man. I'll, I'll I was guys. just there two weeks ago. I was just there. I know you didn't hit me up. I don't know. I don't well, know. You didn't. Hey, next time I you're. Know. The world, man, and you need tickets or something, you know. Hey, I got connections, bro. I know it sounds like we got the plug all over the place because Vince okay. you know, said, yeah. said they got a universal plug for us. Randy's so. hooked up at Universal and Disney now, yeah. So, looks like I have no reason not to come down. Well, my kids, my kids, <laughs> I, I got family members that work at all the parks, so of course, you know, I get you know, I get help I mean, Universal. This, uh, whatever I want to go, I love, I, I love my kids, love SeaWorld, go there a lot. Johnny, how big is your family? Like, I know your family is huge, but like, what about your extended relatives? Do they all have like eight kids? No. Johnny has more than eight. I have my parents only have four kids: uh, two boys, uh, mm. two boys, and two girls. Oh, only four. Yeah. Only four. We had, we had two boys, two girls. We adopted a brother, um, so it was just five of us. My see, my sister has uh, three kids. My other sister has three. My brother has one, and my other brother has. Yeah, I guess I'm. I'm I guess I have about 75% of the grandchildren on picking up your brother's slack. I heard that one. I have eight. I have eight. Yeah. I'm blessed with eight. Hey, you know, what are you going to do? I don't see that bank. It's the right way to look at it. It's the right, right way to look at it. Oh, yeah. It's expensive. It's, it's expensive. It's, it's, it's tough. It's, it's, it's tough. But, you know, uh, I see that's a blessing. I remember people always tell me, oh, man, eight kids, man. What do you watch on TV? God, porn, motherfucker. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you get that a lot, man. You get that a lot of people, man. Oh my God, eight kids, man. What are you watching on TV? What the hell you think I do, man? What do you want me to do? Nah, I'm joking. Back to the Super Bowl. Yeah, nah. <laughs> yeah. You're one kid away from actually being Bang Bang Niner Gang, like in real life. <laughs> bang, bang, bang. I'm like Pops. Rest in peace, Pops. From the Wayne's Brothers, Pops. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> Hey, he's not gonna like my prediction. Yeah, so let's let's, let's let's get to before we get to your prediction. Just tell me uh, the day after the Super Bowl, which should oh, be. Oh yes, the- yes, oh. yes. Day after Super Bowl. Listen, so as everybody knows, alcohol dehydrates you. So that's a great. I'm glad you mentioned that because I, I I have a couple of things. So, anyways, so everybody knows, man. A lot of drinking, of course, and you start. It's like tailgating. You start like like nine in the morning, and you don't end till like when. So yeah, this is like yeah, he has it right there. So listen, it's alcohol. So alcohol takes away, you know, so you get dehydrated. The electrolytes, your sodium, everything goes down, potassium goes mm-hmm. down. And that's where the hangovers come in. So a lot of people don't know that. So of course, to replace every one of those things, like for instance, I personally, I, I like to drink V8 after with a hangover. Don't it just it does something for me. It, it pumps me up. So you could, you know, something drink wise, V8, Gatorade, everybody knows the basics. Well, as far as foods are concerned, eggs is eggs is number one. Eggs is number one. Bananas, the the uh, potassium in bananas number two. Next morning, uh, watermelon. And believe it or not, the number uh, the you know it's an old folk thing, but it's it's true. It's pickle and pickle juice. You drink the juice out of the pickle jar, and uh, the sodium in that just boom. You get you get you get pumped up quick, man. I'm telling you. And an 800 milligram of ibuprofen always works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One in so are you telling me? Are you telling me the rednecks I grew up with my whole life when they told me just to eat a cheeseburger and drink more beer oh. are, are wrong? <laughs> no, no. You know there is another folk legend that more alcohol. There is <laughs> another. There is another. Uh, another thing that you know is true too, man. Drink a beer. Yeah. Drink yeah. a beer. Drink a beer down, man. I. I mean, but you got to go to work. It's kind of hard to go smelling like alcohol. You know, you're already smelling like alcohol. I mean, I don't know a lot of people out of work, but I've always had Sunday Mondays off in every job I've ever had for that reason. I always knew the Super Bowl was on Sunday. For the Super Bowl. I always knew the Super Bowl was on Sundays, and I hate Mondays. So Monday everywhere I ever worked, ever. I swear to God, Sunday, Mondays, never asked for anything else. I mean, I would rather work Saturday than to have Sunday off. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah for sure. I, I really now, I know, like I said, I like I'm oatmeal crackers, crackers, saltine crackers with the salt. Uh, those mm-hmm. are the things. Even, even meat with the protein, you're going to replace it. Remember, you just... You're dehydrated. That's where you get the headaches. That's where you're feeling like crap because, you know, alcohol soaks up. The alcohol soaks up a lot of things in your body when you drink, man. And, yeah. and you have to face all those things. And you, you also sweat a lot. I don't know about you guys, but, you know, when you drink a lot, you party and dance and just sweating. No, my, our Super Bowl parties turn into a nighttime event. I don't know about you guys. When the game's yeah. over, it's more, you know, us Spanish people, we just, it becomes a, you know, it could be a sweet 16. It could be a, 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 a a Christian leave at halftime like white Half people. Hours is us, <laughs> but um, yeah. And then of course, you know, like I said, uh, those those are the things that I, I would do. I, but I'm, I'm a big V8 guy. You know, that's why. I mean, Johnny. That's why I don't do New Year's resolutions. That's why I do post Super Bowl resolutions. My diet doesn't start till the day after the Super Bowl. Oh yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. And then I go I go all out Super Bowl Sunday, and then it's back to you know. Like a semi form of the keto, where it's just like no carbs and that's a fair no alcohol. Story. I never thought of that. That's a be- that's yeah. a good timeline. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because I mean, I'm gonna eat what I want, drink what I want during football season. So for me, it makes more yeah. sense to start fresh right after the last game of the season. Um, and I've always I've done that for the last few years, and it's actually worked out well for me. Well, Maddie Bushnell is joining us in six minutes. Here, he uh, he solves his problem of having to work on Monday after the Super Bowl by having another kid. So. <laughs> different oh, strokes, different hey, I've used that one before too. Great job. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, Eight times to be exact. <laughs> Every time the Jets show promise, Johnny makes sure that his wife is pregnant in early February. Ah uh, man, I tell you, boy. Yes. I mean, 2004. Re- hey, yeah, I had my daughter in uh, May. Red Sox won in 2000. Uh-huh, see. <laughs> oh, you know, yeah. Wait a minute. Hold up. I had another, I had another one. 2000. Oh shit, 2013. My son. <laughs> oh Lord Jesus! When Baby, Mookie, I'm tired of tubes. When Mookie Betts gets traded. There's a dry spell. Baby, I'm tired of tubes. I'm tired of tubes. We're having another one. <laughs> <laughs> bang, bang, Niner gang. Yeah, yeah. Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> All right, Johnny. Hey, Henry, man, I hope you guys. You know, I'm not gonna lie, Henry. I'm gonna go into my prediction. I'm gonna, listen, 
I don't know too many KC fans here in Florida. Um, I know a lot of 49er fans in my lifetime growing up uh, in Connecticut. There was, I had a lot of 49er fans. So I'm, I'm actually, you know, hope, I'm hoping you guys win. But the football guy in me, the, the, what I see, what you guys are offering, what they're offering, I'm going to go with KC because also I'm going to tell you, I'm going with KC. Andy Reid, I'm a big fan of Andy Reid's, and I think he got shit on. He's a very talented head coach. We'd love to see him win it. Um, but it's the quarterback, man. I'm, I'm just going to go with the quarterbacks here to make my decision. And I got you got your quarterback who stands around and watch the defense do all the work. And then you got a quarterback that does all the work. And then you got a quarterback that does all the work. I'm just saying. And then you got a quarterback that does all the work. So, I mean, I'm going with the quarterback here. I'm going with that MVP. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to go with my boy, man. Oh, I'm saying, sorry, you know. I'm trying to get a discount on my uh, uh, <laughs> We'll revisit it on Monday. <laughs> yeah, my prediction of score-wise, I wrote it down because I didn't want to forget it. Let's see what I wrote. All right, here it is, man. 50 to I, wrote, I wrote 28-24, KC. Okay. Love it. I love it. All about stopping the quarterback in KC. If you can't stop him and put a, a – a, you're going to have to put somebody to run with him. You know, that somebody's going to spy him the whole time. If not – He'll run it on you. He'll throw it on you. And I just don't see your quarterback matching that up. If your defense steps up and get picks and stuff, then, yeah, you have a great chance of winning this game. But sorry, brother. I mean, uh, sorry. You know. I used to love you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to remember, we're betting here. we got to also take some money and go gamble here. You don't want to put me I ain't trying to lose money. I ain't trying to lose money, man. You, I got eight kids. <laughs> nine is a slight underdog, so you actually win a little more money if you bet and hit. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, see? And you know why? It's the quarterback. It's the quarterback. It's and I'm like a great guy. I'm, in my, a, a good, uh, I'm a big fan of T.O. That's my quarterback. My that's quarterback. quarterback. <laughs> Yo, that's my quarterback. That's what I'm going. That's, going. that's my quarterback, man. Did he say that? that what season did he say that? Was he it said that after... The, uh, the interception oh, yeah, against the Giants. Okay, that's what I thought, they, yeah. yeah. When they shit it on Tony Romo after a playoff game. Was it him? Was that was that it brings back very happy memories for Vince and I. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think he dropped the hold on the on the field goal. Remember yeah, that? Yeah, I thought it was after the botch hold. No, I, think no, botch. No, I don't think he was on the team right. yet, though. I think oh, it, yeah, it was after the interception. Yeah, he threw it He threw it in a triple coverage in the end zone. So And I remember. Yeah, and R.W. McCorders, who was pretty terrible for most of his career, yeah. uh, picked it off. The football guy in me. In the end zone. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so what time is Matt coming on? Let's see. But, hey, listen, I'll write, the, I'll write some of the recipes and on the chicken uh, chicken breast thing and all that in the, in the comment box for anybody that wants to take yeah, a look. Please, please, please do that. I will definitely try your, your method for the crack dip this time around. I'm looking, yeah, yeah, looking yeah. to feed like 10 people or so. So I'll try that method this time around for sure. Hey, hey you, man, I'll tell you one thing. If you had a Publix where you live, man, you'd be loving it, bro. <laughs> I live I, I live in upstate New York, man. We don't have anything good around. They got that it. That chicken dip over there in Publix, ooh, fire. <laughs> hey, no. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get Publix to, to sponsor my damn lab show one time. Watch, I'm gonna get that it. would be awesome. That'd be awesome. Probably Probably would get, do it because shopping's on. a pleasure there. I'm working on something like that. Before I leave, too, I want to let everybody know I'm gonna do a quick plug on the on the lab show and the, the food life. Um, I think big things are coming, man. I'm working it slow, so we got we got big things coming, guys. Me and Matt have some great ideas. We're gonna actually do some cooking live on the, on the thing. We're working everything out, so just give us a little, you know, give us some time, you know. Awesome. Uh, I believe the group, uh, the group went up uh, over 125 more members, so we're 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 getting there, man. We're getting yeah. there. very fast, quickly growing. I think that the lab is uh, something everyone looks forward to. I that might be the only podcast so far besides my own that I've caught every episode. Um, no offense to the other ones, but it, it grips me. It makes me very hungry, but it grips me. And uh, how's, that and nice time slot. how's that diet going, Vince? <laughs> yeah, not well when I listen to you. <laughs> what do you have tomorrow for Super Bowl, Vince? <laughs> Randy, Randy gave him an out by telling him his plan. A lot, of shit. no, a lot of portion control. I saved up 62 cheat points for tomorrow. Uh, oh, oh, please. Hey, I would have start. I would have ate nothing for a month. I would have. Yeah. I would have 800 points available. Yeah. It's, uh, we're going to see how it goes. Points, I'd have been like, bam, bam, bam. I got to go back tomorrow. I got to go back, baby. This is my first Super Bowl with self with self restraint. So we'll see how it goes. Good yeah. luck. Godspeed. Yeah. Always good to better yourself, man. Health wise, mind wise. 
and everything else in life, man. I always can't say that shit after all that food you gave us. <laughs> hey. He does. He makes you hey, so hungry, it? and then he's like, "By the way, don't die on my." Yeah. Oh, no, listen. Yeah. So I've said this before on my show on the, on our podcast that I'm a diabetic. I'm, I'm I, I I take insulin. I'm I'm a bad diabetic. So I do all this cooking. I do. It, well, I actually watch a lot of people eat and do have a great time. But I don't eat like that. I can't. I wish I could. You know, I have to be careful. I mean, my, I have to, I don't eat three meals a day. I have to eat like five little meals a day because my blood sugar goes really hot. But hey, tomorrow, insulin and party time, baby. <laughs> but, but tomorrow is Saturday. Tomorrow is Sunday. Saturday. Huh? I mean, oh, excuse me. It's uh, football Friday. Come on. Tomorrow's pregame, man. Tomorrow's pregame. <laughs> well, yeah, it's a whole celebration. He's, loaded, whole he's loading up on meds early just in case. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. I won't, no, I ain't going to lie. I won't eat nothing. I won't eat nothing to the game. I'll definitely be ready for that, man. No, yeah. for real. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna have to front load my cheat points now that I realize it's Sunday, the Super Bowl. Hey, just add yes. some more points and cut yourself short for the following week, baby. You know what I mean? <laughs> you some more points, but like, you know what? I can't eat that on Monday. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Drink a lot of water, man. Drink a lot of water. <laughs> All right, Johnny. Thank you for right. joining us. Johnny, by the way, officially a 28-24 prediction for the Chiefs. So we have a split yes. as far as the guests go. I hope somebody's keeping track of this shit. But hey, yes. Hey, listen, I see Matt there. I'm about to go. But listen, if uh, my prediction is wrong, oh, well, but it, I would love for them to win it for you, Henry. All right, brother? I love it. I love it, baby. Thank all you. Right. God bless, guys. Have a good yeah. show. I'll be watching. Johnny, man. thanks for coming on, man. Thank you so much. All right, all right, Randy. Talk to you guys. All right, all right Matt. Congrats, Matt. I see you, man. <laughs> I see you too, Johnny. All right, I don't know how to get off of here without this. Like, you know, <laughs> I got to do I don't know how to get off. Hold on. What I got to do, baby? What I got to do? I think between Johnny and, and, and Matt, that's like 16 kids right there. Yeah. The, everyone <laughs> take note while you can. It's a Guinness record. Johnny, I got you. I'll, I'll remove I got it. it. I got it. I, got, I okay. think I got it. Holy shit. What's going on? I think my computer's pregnant. I got it. I got it. Oh, man. Oh, boy. There we go. This, yes, show, Matt. this show is off the rails already. That was. Uh, we're, we're an hour in, my friend. Good. It's been off the rails. Maddie B. What up, Henry? Good, baby. So let's transition here. We just had Johnny. That was from the lab. Now we've got Matt. This is your rightful show with Randy and Carl. Uh, welcome. I know you've had yourself a whirlwind of a week or two yes, weeks. Yes, sir. Um, joining us, very Moe's-like appearance from the office. I like it. Uh, <laughs> what, uh, how are you doing? Man, I am dead tired. <laughs> I was going to say... 10 p.m. Eastern time. It's impressive you're joining us, given that you just had a kid. Yeah, well, you know, it, it, it's been a trying uh, week. I can say that uh, without dev dev divulging too much personal information. But, um, you know, you just got to keep on trucking. The one thing that was important to me was that this show carries on, even if I couldn't join. So I have to thank all of you guys for holding down the fort. Uh, Randy doing a fantastic job, as always. Vince, I have to check the recording to see how many dong jokes there are. You gotta see. <laughs> Henry, you got that ugly... yeah. <laughs> Henry, you got that ugly ass chain on? All day, baby. <laughs> I got all the, the name, the name is worse than the chain. <laughs> That's, yeah, the, the worst. Anyway, we uh, let's get let's get into it here. We've had all of kind of the festivities. We'll I, use the I think we should make on. Matt do a wardrobe change he's got to have something i mean i i know he's burying his head in the sand because he's a bears fan but he's got to have something on yeah randy we had a request for you to change into an eli jersey too that came right here. <laughs> i mean i can go get it if you'd like but, but I mean, that I request don't... that request was intercepted <laughs> I, I i have i have a special uh surprise for henry it's coming up later here so oh, good uh oh, i am gonna, uh, gonna leave it at that so we uh, now that we've got Matt, our, our uh, game tape expert, on the show, and we, we'll start with with Henry's team here since he's here, and we could not find a Chiefs fan. Um, you know, let's talk about the Niners a little bit. Obviously, representing the NFC, uh, they've been red hot of late. Look totally unbeatable on the NFC portion of the playoffs. Uh, how did we how did we get to this point? You know, starting with kind of how the team was built, and then we can kind of go through the season itself. Henry, let's start with you. I'm sure you've seen every game this season. You know, what what got you here? What What's your bread and butter? 
Um, I mean, everyone talks about the defense, but I think Shanahan with an extra year of his guys and being healthy. I think everyone being healthy. Um, I, I would tell you guys privately, you know, even going back to last year, a healthy Niner team would be a good one. Um, this good, I didn't expect it. I did predict them to have nine wins this year. Um, but I, I think health, uh, good coaching, and 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 um, Rob Salah, man, what he did with that that defense is is that defense is fast. So, you know, even if we play guys one on one, they close gaps. You know, I was watching some highlights and they had uh, they were showing Dalvin Cook when he had huge gap and just it closed up quick. So I think that defense and the speed that the defense plays with uh, should match up well. And Matt, what um you know, talk about that defense a little bit, how it was assembled. What what makes it? I mean, it's fast. So I think we all see that. But what makes it so dangerous? The front. Um, when they can bring three guys, I, I think the acquisition of D Ford yeah. kind of under the radar was such a huge m- move because you can put Bosa any spot on the line and that makes your defensive line versatile. Then you have that behemoth of a human being, DeForest Buckner. And I, I don't think people realize how big DeForest Buckner is. The kid is six foot seven and he's a little over 300 pounds. And that creates matchup problems on your offensive line. You put Buckner in the middle, not only – we're just not talking pass rush, but the wingspan, getting your arms up. And defensive linemen are always taught, if you can't get to the quarterback, what you need to do is get your arms up because that's how you're going to deflect passes. They shut down passing lanes with the defensive front. They're able to bring pressure without blitzing. Now, they do like to mix up some blitz packages, but how they built this team – and I've criticized John Lynch quite a bit – he missed on Solomon Thomas, uh, Eric Armstead, you know, really didn't turn out too well, but he's really tried to build that defensive line, which in theory is good, but you'd hate to see so many first round draft picks not turn out because you're spending them on defensive linemen. It's like Matt Millen drafting wide receivers in the top three, three straight years in a row. So um, it, it was just a really good plan executed well. And I'm going to say the other big acquisition is Kwan Alexander. Like, they don't get enough credit for identifying the linebacker spot. Richard Sherman, another. So they built the defensive line and added in the back. Okay. Nick, Randy, I know you're a uh, connoisseur of how teams should draft. So I'll go to you. <laughs> Uh, I mean, the Niners had a lot of things go their way, right? I mean, the Bears were super desperate to trade up a spot to, to draft Mitch Trubisky, which uh, allowed them to get extra draft capital, which uh, is sensitive to someone uh, in this in this pod right now. But uh, um, what's that? What draft year was that? I believe that was 2017. Um, I believe that's also the year you drafted Solomon Thomas. So it's not like you were completely – um, you know, you didn't take advantage of that 100%, but at least... Is there you, any you, other you quarterbacks in that draft, though, that the Bears could have taken? Oh, Shut yeah. Up. There's, there's Shut a guy up. playing in the game nope, this, nope, nope. this weekend. Uh, yeah, we'll get nope. to that later. Nope, nope, nope. nope. <laughs> but anyway, the 49ers, I, I was really uh, questioning the John Lynch hire because this guy had no pre- prior experience uh, assembling rosters in general because uh, obviously he was a player and a, and a great player at that. But he's, he's proven to... Uh, be able to assemble guys, at least good chemistry guys. I think you got kind of got lucky with Richard Sherman. He obviously blew out his Achilles and then represented himself and then bet on himself with the contract situation. And and I'm not saying like Richard Sherman was an all pro this year. He had an amazing season, but he's not the same guy he used to be, but you could tell his leadership ability and the guys look up to him and he is totally a glue guy on that defense. Um, but, you know, I think what really rounded out the rest of the defense is, is Nick Bosa. And I, I, I mean, he only had nine sacks this year, but you could tell that he elevates the play of Eric Armstead, DeForest Buckner, D Ford. I mean, even Fred Werner. And like you said, Quan Alexander on the backside. Um, th- there's just so many players, uh, Greenlaw, right? I mean, that guy makes plays every week and I, I'm all, he's always just getting into a hole and just stuffing a running back. And I think the front line truly like sets the tone for the rest of the team. Um, and it, I mean, also what John Lynch did, I mean, maybe he got lucky doing this as well, but Bill Belichick gives him a phone call, says, Hey, I'll give you Jimmy Garoppolo for a second round pick. Okay. Well, Jimmy Garoppolo, we might not think he's that good, but guess what? Jimmy, Gar- they're not in the Super Bowl if they don't have Jimmy Garoppolo. If they, yeah. if they have uh, what's his name, what's the name of your backup? I can't think of his name. He's a, um, 
We have Mullins. Oh, and a blank guy. <laughs> yeah, he played last year a lot, and he was okay, but he's not Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, and, I, and, I mean, that was huge. Obviously, we, we talk so much about how much quarterbacks matter. I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo uh, is obviously a franchise quarterback, whether he's top half of the league, wherever he stands, but he obviously makes enough. a difference. Yeah, he's good enough. And when he got hurt last year, totally wrecked the 49 ers season. I don't know what they do last year if they win or if he doesn't get hurt, I mean. But against the Chiefs, mind you, that's another narrative for this week uh, that I'm looking forward to talking about. But they, they kind of got lucky in a lot of aspects, but they also capitalized on a lot of things that got them to where they are now. People forget some of the mistakes they made. They signed Jarek McKinnon to a massive contract, and he has yet to even play a snap for them. Uh, they also signed Tevin Coleman, who has been completely outshined by Raheem Mostert, who we'll talk about in a second. But there is a lot of things that they did that were questionable, and yet they still find themselves here. Uh, they, they do everything well from a football standpoint where we all agree that you win football games in the trenches. And their offensive and defensive line dominate games that they play in, and that's why they went 13-3, and and that's why they didn't lose games in blowout fashion. They really only – they lost – like the biggest margin of defeat was six points. And, I mean, they, they were in every game they played in this year for that reason. And kind of talking about Matt, we'll go back to you. Uh, you know, you mentioned the running backs, Randy. We, at least I have seen that, and I, I don't know the game at the level that you and Randy probably do because you've played it at a higher level uh, or any level. How, like, they've been making holes for that for those running backs larger than I think I've ever seen at any level of football in my life, and in the playoffs against elite teams. How are they doing it? Is it more scheming or is it just pure like mismatch or, you know, how are, or is it the running backs? Like what, what's going on there that's made them be able to run for two, 300 yards every game? Well, let's go to la- or the NFC championship game. The Packers, one of the worst rated run defenses in the NFL that they have issues. And usually when you see big runs, get open like that it's due to gap integrity you can scheme but it's schemes only going to open up you know holes for a certain amount of time one you need defensive players to be undisciplined two your offensive linemen have to kick out their guys the technique and getting their heads i I don't want to get too advanced here but you always want your head where the hole is going to be at you don't want the defensive player outside shoulder or inside shoulder where the hold is going to be. You want your head as an offensive lineman where that hole is at so you can turn that defensive lineman and kick them out. So a lot of it will have to do with technique. Um, Like I said, defensive players losing gap integrity. They don't stay disciplined. They try to be a hero, and it opens, opens up big holes. The Vikings I was a little disappointed in. I thought they were – I thought they would be able to stop the run more stoutly – but I kind of saw the 49ers offensive line really taking control and really winning that line of scrimmage battle. And like Randy said, it's, it starts really with the line of scrimmage. Do you win that upfront battle? And if you can, you're probably going to win a lot of ball games. If you win on the offensive line and you win on the defensive line, chances are you're going to have a really good time. Um, and obviously Jimmy Garoppolo is one of the beneficiaries of that. I will say this. Greg, George Kittle, I don't know why I keep on thinking Greg Kittle, but George Kittle (laughs) is an absolute beast when it comes to run blocking. And then you also, the safety has to be in a position to be able to also drop back and pass coverage. So it's kind of hard to stack the box with the safety when he has to cover Kittle. And it's already a mismatch because the safety is not going to have the same size and girth as Kittle. So you have a mismatch there. And then Jimmy Garoppolo just does enough. He has enough accuracy. He has enough arm strength where if you do try to stack the box and you do try to sell out blitzing, he's going to beat you. So the reason why, and I'm going to go to this, and I'll say it right now, the reason why the 49ers are in the Super Bowl more so than anything else is the acquisition of Emmanuel Sanders. When they got Emmanuel Sanders, it changed the entire dynamic of that offense. He's a reliable slot third down receiver who's a first down machine. Okay. I, I, I want to just touch on this too. Like when we talk about assembling the teams, one of the main reasons that uh, the Niners are where they are now too is because they hired Kyle Shanahan to be their head coach. Um, they, they, Bob, you mentioned the holes that they opened up for the offensive line. A lot of that is amazing play calling by the head coach. He, 
recognizes defensive fronts. He recognizes schemes. He recognizes formations. And he just calls plays that work well against that formation. Like, he is – like, for the, most of his career, other than a half of a Super Bowl that we're not going to talk about, he's been an incredible <laughs> play caller. And, I, and the, it's, not a, it's not a coincidence of, all, like, three different running backs for the 49ers had over 500 yards rushing this year. Well – They ran I, – I think that he really identifies matchups really well and, and, and calls plays to their strengths. A staple of any Shanahan offense, this goes back to Mike as well, is the zone blocking scheme. You know, mm-hmm. you're blocking an area. You're not blocking a man. So when you get an undisciplined defensive front coming at you, which the Packers mostly are, the Packers are going to sell out to try to blitz you all the time or, you know, bring the outside pressure. They want to get to the quarterback. They're going to lose that gap integrity. And then with the zone block, you just block a guy, you know, who's in that yeah. spot. It's not like you get confused by defensive fronts. It's actually a very friendly scheme for offensive linemen because, mm-hmm. all right, you have seven guys in the box. Well, I know I have to block this area as opposed to, okay, I have to step with my right foot first instead of your left foot sometimes, depending on where the defensive player is in a gap. So it, it really is a more run-friendly system that Shanahan runs. Okay. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. And it, Henry, let's, uh, let's pepper you a little bit here as, as the fan. Um, when was the moment where you were like, uh, two moments? When, first, when was the moment where you were like, we could be pretty good? Because I've known you, you've been a pretty optimistic Niners fan. You've been predicting this since 2014. You've been predicting this for six years. Yeah, this year you go to nine and seven. Um, when was your moment where you were like, this is the year I'm going to be right? And when was your moment when you're like, holy shit, like this team can beat anyone? Um, I mean, I did believe in us from the beginning. Let's put that out there. Like I said, I predicted us to win nine games. Um, my first knockout pool pick this year was the Niners, if you guys remember. Yeah. And you guys thought I, were, I was nuts. Um, yeah. I mean, I probably am nuts, but yeah. Um, road game too, right? Yeah. Against Tampa. Yeah, I was expecting us to acquire, and I was bitching and moaning all offseason, all through the draft. I kept saying we needed a number one receiver. You guys know that. I've been crying about it, saying we need a number one. We need a number one. You can't rely on good wind speed. You can't just keep recycling guys. You can't have three number threes, three slot guys. You just can't do it. Um, I think when we got Sanders, I was excited. We didn't give a lot up for him. But the emergence of Debo, man. Debo, Debo, yeah, hasn't been mentioned yet. Debo is a beast. And, you know, maybe Sanders takes some attention off of him. Um, you know, Kittle is a monster over the middle, so you, you have to pay attention over him. You, you can't play Debo one-on-one because you have to have someone spying over the middle. Um, that run game is, is nasty. The holes are crazy. But I think, um, you know, we, we started getting flack because of our schedule. And we started to be better teams. The blowout game against Green Bay stood out because we were like, okay, Green Bay is a really good team. We just smoked them. We smoked them. Um, I think as, as our play went on, the, the speed of the defense is something that was eye-opening. And then I just saw how we controlled the clock over and over, you know, five, six, seven-minute drives, you know, and you win games like that. And then we had a few – close games that I felt every time we were there, we would lose a tough game. You know, a Monday night game in Seattle, you know, we missed two kicks and, and we lost in overtime. That was gut-wrenching. The game in Baltimore that I went to, I drove all the way to Baltimore. I saw a hell of a game. And I, even though we lost, I left satisfied because we could have won that game. We should have won that game. So mm-hmm. all season, there have been, you know, certain wins, you know, New Orleans, you know, that was a hell of a game. You know, there was just every win got bigger and bigger and bigger. And I, and I think because of that, you know, we'll, we'll benefit from it because as the moment got larger, you know, you saw our guys step up, you saw Shanahan make smarter play calls, you know, um, the Minnesota game, we could have completely stomped them and aired them out. And he just kept rushing the ball, eating the clock, rushing the ball. He, he played two halves of football and same thing with green Bay. He just, he eats that clock. Um, and, and I think uh, I know you guys spoke about Kansas City's run defense. It's not good. You know, smart money says we're going to run. But we'll see. I, you know, sometimes you go to the Super Bowl and you see coaches who, uh, you know, they have a Pete Carroll moment where they try to, you know, want to outsmart people. And 
oh, everyone expects us to run. Let's throw the ball. You know, I don't think he'll do that. But yeah, you, you brought up those two games earlier, Henry, about uh, against the Ravens and the and the Saints. Those are two games back to back weeks, yeah. both road games. And and I thought the Niners were smart because they stayed in Florida in between those two games instead yeah. of going going back home. Um, I was really impressed. I watched those two games earlier today, actually, and I was really impressed with the different styles of play that they had in each game. Um, they played tough defensive game against the Ravens. They kind of matched their style, their, their running attack. They, they kind of went toe for toe for them. And then in the dome, they were able to air it out and, yeah. and score 48 points against the Saints. And I think that's a credit to Kyle Shanahan, a credit to your offense, a credit to your defense, being able to adapt to any sort of situation. It's almost uh, Patriot-like, dare I say, but that because the Patriots can do the same thing, sort of chameleon toward, like, towards their opponent. You know what, what I do like about um, us as I fix my chain here is um, – <laughs> Rob Salah, you know, he uh, he makes adjustments fast. And in that Baltimore game, we had no answer for Lamar Jackson. And a lot of people think Lamar is better than uh, Pat Mahomes. I, I don't think you can go wrong with either guy. But, you know, we had no answer for Lamar Jackson in that first half. And in the second half, we completely shut him down. So, you know, we made that adjustment. And, and I think we'll see a, a similar adjustment in the Super Bowl. <clears throat> You seem to disagree about the Mahomes-Jackson comparison. Why don't you give us your thoughts there? So, Jackson, when we still take a look at the stats, majority comes from running. I mean, that's what really elevated his QBR and a lot of his MVP. Deservedly so. I mean, it was an amazing year. I, I, I'm still not a big believer of him making tight throws when they're when you have to make them. Um, when you have to make plays, I just think that I, I don't trust him enough to throw the football to win the game. You know, he, he had a great year. I don't want to take anything away from him. When it comes to Patrick Mahomes, it's almost unfair. I mean, we talk about quarterbacks <laughs> in this NFL. I touched on Rodgers this year. Um, I, I think he's falling off quite a bit. We saw Breeze. I don't think Breeze is as good as he was. I, I think we're starting to see a new era of quarterbacks with Rivers. He'll be looking for a new home. Tom Brady may be looking for a new home. So we look at the quarterback landscape. So, yeah, Jackson's going to be elevated because the, the competition's coming down. You know, we see quarterbacks falling back down to earth. But you have Patrick Mahomes. When healthy, he does things that no other quarterback in this league can do. I mean, his combination of being able to run and escape pressure. I mean, this is a big point right here. Like, when you look at Mahomes, it's kind of deceiving because you really don't understand how big he is. I mean, he's six foot three, 230 pounds. That's a big boy to take yeah. down back there. And he's able to shake off would be sacks, much like Ben Roethlisberger, not quite as big. Jackson has a smaller frame. Um, of course, he's faster, but Mahomes can give himself that extra second to throw the football. He doesn't need to be a run first. He doesn't have to run to escape out of the pocket. And what happens when those DBs see a defensive lineman grab the quarterback, they relax coverage. And then that's when guys get open. Right. Mahomes is just, it's like playing a video game and you're playing against the computer on all Madden, and, and they have, you know, the computer has Patrick Mahomes. See, I mean, you made a lot of mention of uh, the things that Jackson doesn't do well. And I think, this year's Lamar Jackson was last year's Mahomes. A lot of the stuff we saw from Jackson this year and a lot of stuff we're saying about Jackson next year a stuff that we said about Mahomes last year. He wasn't making those throws. He didn't have to. We don't believe in him yet. And then Mahomes took his game to a whole nother level this season. Yeah, yeah Henry, I, I, I just have to – I'm going to disagree a little bit because you don't throw for close to 5,000 yards and 50 touchdowns by not being able to make throws in tight windows. I think a lot of it had to do Tyreek with... Tyreek helps a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he had Tyreek Hill, he had Travis Kelsey, he had Kareem Hunt. Yeah. You know, he had a lot of weapons at his disposal. So, can, so let's ask this question to everyone here. Can Lamar Jackson take that next step? Do you see it in his game? I think so. I didn't think he could take this step. <laughs> so I'm out on that one. I'm not. Well, I mean, a, a lot of people didn't think he could take the step, but he, you know, to his credit, you know, he clearly worked hard and, and 
you know, he's had a hell of a season. You know, I think we, yeah. we kept waiting for defenses around the league to adjust to him. And, and, you know, like I said, we did for a half, but the league just didn't catch on to him. Not yet. And with these, yep. you know, these guys, you know, these run first or, you know, mobile quarterbacks, there's always that, you know, when the league catches them, you know, we'll see what happens. You know, Russell Wilson is an example of he makes adjustments back. You know, he's one of the better quarterbacks in the league, you know, so can Jackson make the counter adjustment that we'll, he will see next year? You know, they're going to throw different things at him next year. Yeah. Then, well, can he can he make the next step as in like, can he be Patrick Mahomes? I, I, don't, no. I, don't, I, don't, I don't think about that. I, I think, think he can so. improve for sure. Um, I think he if you could, he could get a weapon like Patrick Mahomes has. Right. I think and he has I, good receivers. Go. Yeah, I think if he had a little bit more receiving help, he his passing numbers might look better. And they look great already this year, but I think it would help with some of those tight window throws and, and things like that. I think he took his game to another level this year, but I don't see a ceiling like Patrick Mahomes for Lamar Jackson. I think they're different quarterbacks. So we take a look at all these quarterbacks right now, particularly in this game. So we got Jimmy Garoppolo on one side, Patrick Mahomes on another. And then we have Lamar Jackson. Um, I'm trying to think of another quarterback. Well, let's go, let's go with the guy that the Bears traded up to get with the 49ers, Mitchell Trubisky. And I think what, to a lesser degree, Trubisky kind of had a year like Lamar Jackson had the year prior. You know, Trubisky was able to run. He was third in total QBR. Um, he, he made some impressive throws, but you were like, okay, you know, this is the next step. What are you going to be? And then we kind of saw the league figure out Trubisky. You know, I, I don't think there was any more secrets. Like, okay, we know he can run. So let's start spying a linebacker on him. Totally threw Mitch off his game. Well, it wasn't the same. We kind of think we know what he is now. So to Henry's point, how is Lamar Jackson going to respond now that, hey, they have 16 games on him. We know what we have to do against his run. So now it's time for the counter punch. I think Garoppolo... I want to see what his next step is. I, I, I don't know where Garoppolo's ceiling is at. And it, it's, not, it's not a good thing for Garoppolo. Like Patrick Mahomes, I don't know where Mahomes' ceiling's at yet. I just know it's extremely high. So I, I have to see from, I, I mean, we talk about it all the time. Where is Garoppolo in these quarterbacks? Some people say, oh, he's top 12. You know, guys like me, somewhere between 16 and 20. I, I, I just, I, I don't know where I would put Garoppolo. And if Garoppolo can win this game, maybe he vaults up. And, that, you know, that's a, a good thing to bring up. Let's talk about kind of the other side of this now, because we know we don't I, I agree with you. I think that Jimmy G could be anywhere from a maybe slightly below average to mediocre to above average quarterback. We kind of don't know. And it's not entirely his fault because Niners run the ball every freaking play. But let's so we do what we do know is Pat Mahomes, um, and we've seen and we know his supporting cast. Uh, so let's talk about the Chiefs a little bit before we kind of get into the specific matchups of Jimmy G versus Mahomes and everything. How did the Chiefs assemble all of this talent in an NFL cap? <laughs> well, I mean they've got Watkins, Kelsey, um, Tyreek Hill, how did they get to this point where you have all of that offensive talent and enough defensive talent to get to the Super Bowl? Two words, character issues. So they were opportunists? Yeah, yeah. Ty Tyreek Hill came out of college and it, it wasn't a good report. It was like, this guy has issues. He has a history of and that, spousal abuse. And that spared itself out. Yep. Um, Kareem Hunt came out with a lot of red flags. Like, yeah, we don't know about this guy. Uh, Kelsey was largely an unknown. You know, when you draft tight ends, like Kittle, I think what Kittle was drafted in the third round, Henry? Uh, I think later. Okay, so, it, yeah. We, I'm sorry. And w when you find guys like these um, and how you do it in the cap, you take advantage of being able to draft these guys really low. I mean, Hill has probably cost himself some money for his next contract with this incident that he had this year, even though he was acquitted of any charges. But yeah, I mean, you get these guys by finding them late in the draft and other guys you find with immense talent that have character issues. 
It's a similar thing to the 49ers where you don't get to this situation without being a little fortunate. Um, yep. You have, you, you have the bears completely misevaluating two quarterbacks in the same draft class and picking the, the third best guy. And then you have a guy who many people thought was a project coming out and happening and, and seemingly getting drafted into the best possible situation for him uh, with Andy Reed and an offense that is like sort of a West coast offense uh, that made Alex Smith look like uh, a semi-elite quarterback. You pair his arm strength with his mobility, um, with a guy's speed like Tyreek Hill, with a guy's uh, playmaking ability like Travis Kelsey. And then at that point, it doesn't matter what the rest of the team looks like. You have a great offensive line anchored by Jeff Schwartz. Not Jeff Schwartz, Mitchell Schwartz, his brother. Um, they, they really have put together a strong offensive core because of how fortunate they were that they got Patrick Mahomes at 10 and they don't have to pay him very much for another couple of years. And like you said, character <laughs> issues with Tyreek Hill and Kareem Hunt. And then uh, defensively, you have, a, you have a, a foundation in place where you have a guy like Honey Badger, Tyron Matthew, who wants to come play for a contender and completely elevates the rest of your defense. So, um, I mean, it's, it's something you trade a guy like Marcus Peters for character issue problems, but it, it elevates the rest of your guys because you have uh, a fuller and then you have um, other, other corners who might not be top tier guys, but guys that are good enough to make plays um, and not get beat because they're, they're gambling every play like Marcus Peters was. And I'm not saying Marcus Peters isn't a good player, but he's obviously a, a type of player that benefits from a better defensive core around him. And the Chiefs definitely didn't have that. So, I mean, obviously you don't get to this point without a little luck. And I think the Chiefs and 49ers both were very fortunate to get to this point with some of the decisions that, uh, that other teams made that allowed them to get the players that they have. How good is the defense? I mean, we, we know how good the Chiefs offense is. We know how good the Niner defense is. We know how good the Niner running game is. We know how good the Chiefs passing game is. How good is the Chiefs defense? Is it- I, think it's, I, I think it's underrated, but I don't think it's top tier. At, but, I mean, Chris Jones is a good player. Frank Clark is a good player. We sp- I just spoke about Tyron Matthew, who uh, by all means is a, a top three safety in the league, if not, if not one or two. Um, you know, I, I worry a little bit about the linebackers. Um, I worry about some of their, their pass rushes. But at the same time, they've, they've shown that they can make plays and that they're opportunistic. So you don't always need big names. You don't always need um, – you, you do need depth at every level. I'm not saying that's not important. But at the same time, they have found their, like found themselves making plays at, at, at times um, when they need to. And, and at the end of the day, if you can create a turnover in an opportune spot, then your defense is good enough. Um, I really like the way they stepped up against Derrick Henry. I did not think they were capable of that last week. I'm not sure if they'll be able to step up against the 49ers, but I can't wait to see them give it a shot. Matt, what are your, what are your thoughts? Um, you know, we'll get into the specific matchup with the Niners, but we've seen the Chiefs defense evolve kind of as the season's gone on. I think they're a lot better than their stats are down the stretch. What change, and, and again, same question to you, how good do you think they can be? Is it enough to stop an elite team, you know, even if not the Niners specifically? I think so. Um, I think what you saw with the Chiefs defense evolving into what they are now is getting familiar with Steve Spagnuolo's scheme, understanding where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. I I can't, to, to Randy's point, you can't undervalue how much Tyron Matthew means to this defense. I mean, he is a huge cog to what they want to do. And to analyze the game, when we get to that, I'll explain how important he's going to be in this game. Chris Jones, a, a little bit better than a good player, um, Randy. I got to take issue with that. I, I think no, Chris right, Jones, right. yeah, I mean, when you talk about defensive tackles, he's one of the top three or four defensive tackles in all of football. And you saw Frank, the difference when he didn't play, didn't play. So, Yeah, yeah, so – that's another reason why they may be a little underrated. Frank Clark is very good. Um, I kind of agree with your assessment, Randy. He's not great, um, but he's definitely, he can hold his own. He's, he can make plays when you need him to make plays. A a, a trademark of a good defense. Can you get off the field on third down? You know, you, you have to be able to get stops. And then once you get inside that red zone, can you hold teams to three points? And to go back to what we saw against the uh, Houston Texans in the divisional round when they were, uh, when they were down 21, nothing, the defense had to respond. And we know Vince and I, you know, we killed Bill O'Brien for this, for, you know, kicking that field goal. 
but they held them to the field goal. And then the whole game turned upside down. You know. You lost your camera there, Matt. Yeah, my my battery is dying out on me on this old phone of mine. Oh. Um, but we saw what they were able to do. You know, the game flipped upside down. They gave the offense a chance, and that's what you want your team to do. Can you give your offense a chance to win the game? And the Chiefs' defense is more than capable to give their offense a chance to win the game. They don't have to go shut people out. They don't have to be a top-10 defense. They just need to get off the field occasionally on third downs, and they need to hold the opposing team to some field goals. And this defense can do that. Was yeah, there... I just want to point out a couple other names that on the on the Kansas City defense that we should uh, be aware of. Uh, Daniel Sorensen made some plays in the playoffs. Uh, he has played well up to this point. Uh, Brashad Breeland and Kendall Fuller uh, are essentially Marcus Peters' replacements. Um, they have played well up to this point. Uh, Emmanuel Agba and Reg- Reggie Raglan also in the front seven um, really played a huge role in stopping Derrick Henry. So, um, you know, they have depth and they have good players on their defense. It's not, it's not like it's a bad defense by any means. Was there a big, what was, the, what was the chiefs moment? I mean, I, I think personally the Niners had a couple, one was uh, one went over the Seahawks and one was probably the other one over the Seahawks, but also the Saints game as Henry mentioned, um, obviously the Niners getting that one seed was, I think probably the biggest moment of the year. What was that for the chiefs? 2019 AFC championship game. Just the experience of losing. Yep. Yeah, uh, that's fair. I think that to my, like his point, I think the biggest moment is, is defeating the Patriots in Foxborough. I think that they, they got there, that their equipment wasn't there on time. If you remember, it got there late. Um, they, they probably didn't, it wasn't the ideal situation for the chiefs, but they went up there and they, they kind of slayed a demon of theirs and they beat the Patriots on the road. Um, against a good defense. I don't think Pat Mahomes played a, a great game by any means, but their defense played well, and they found a way to win. And then to me, I, I wasn't sure at the time if the Chiefs were capable of that. Um, so that that win to me uh, showed me that they were capable. And then going undefeated in their division, I thought, meant something. I think regardless of how good you think the division is, to not lose a game and to completely dominate your division shows that you yeah. are superior and that you are worthy of that. Um, and it kind of felt like it was meant to be in that last game, right? When they're, when they're facing the Chargers and they, they take the lead uh, the same time that Ryan Fitzpatrick takes the lead on the Patriots to get, to get that by, right? It almost felt like the stars were aligning for the Chiefs at that moment. And Kevin Harlan had that great call where he's calling both games at the same time. And like that to me, I was like, you know, there's something about the Chiefs. And then they go down 24 nothing to the, te- the Texans. And then they somehow go on a 51-7 to run, which is unlike anything you've ever heard of. Um, it, I don't know. The, the Chiefs have this little mojo going about them that I, I, I really, I don't know, I, I just I really like what they're doing right now. And, uh, yeah, Andy Reid thus far has managed to avoid being Andy Reid. Um, let's get into Hold that. On. I want to talk about <coughs> real quick. Yeah. Me, I think the moment that turned around for the Chiefs is when that MRI came back cleaner than everyone thought it would. <laughs> good point. Yeah, no doubt. That's a good point, yeah. Henry, because without Patrick Mahomes, none of this is happening. Yeah, yeah. That, is, that is fair. Um, and Shout out to Matt Moore. <laughs> I'm probably not bringing them here um so let's get into it now now we've got you know we're down to two teams we've got chiefs first niners chiefs right have this unstoppable passing game they almost don't need to go to the run because they have mahomes and they have 19 weapons on their offense uh the niners don't really need to go to jimmy g they have three running backs who can kill you they've got a superior line on offense and defensive side um, it's such an intriguing matchup, right? Because it's kind of, it's not a David versus Goliath, but it is a unstoppable force and immovable object type type situation where you have this Niners defense that's just as fast as the Chiefs offense. And no other team, I think, can say that. So jumping into it, uh, we'll kind of go around the horn here. We'll start with you, Randy. What are you looking for in this game? And what do you think, you know, kind of has to happen for both teams to be successful? I uh, I watched some some both teams today, and I tried to watch some of their more difficult matchups. Um, the Niners, to me, they are they're fast. Yes, they're not that fast in the secondary, all things considered. I worry about their coverage of Tyreek Hill, of Michael Hardman, of Demarcus Robinson, of Sammy Watkins. 
of all of the speed that the Chiefs have. And I, especially against the Ravens, I felt like they had a lot of chances, the Ravens did, but they had a lot of drop passes. They had a lot of missed opportunities. Um, and I feel like that Patrick Mahomes won't miss some of the throws that Lamar Jackson missed in that game. So I worry kind of about the safeties and the, the secondary a little bit. Uh, Sherman, obviously, his strength has never been speed. He's always been a big guy who, who kind of – bullies your receivers I don't, I don't necessarily think he was ever the quickest guy um so I, I think the speed for the Chiefs especially on the outside is going to be a problem for the Niners as long as that as long as they can capitalize um the 49ers front seven has to get pressure on Patrick Mahomes if they don't get pressure on Patrick Mahomes it's going to be a long night and I think they will get pressure I think they've shown all year that they can do that um I'm just interested to see how Pat Mahomes responds to this um to me on the other end um the Niners are going to control the clock. And, and I think, I don't think there's really much Kansas city can do about it. However, um, they did rise to the challenge against Derrick Henry. Like I said already, if they can somehow manage to keep, you know, most certain check, keep Coleman's hurt, but he's going to play um, Brita in check. Um, I'm interested to see if Jimmy Garoppolo can um, utilize, um, you know, Emmanuel Sanders on the outside, Debo Samuel and, and George Kittle. I, I tend to think that he'll be fine because I don't know how like, – I think the Chiefs' defense is really good, but they're also undisciplined. I watched a lot of their games. They are very heavily a penalized team. They've been able to overcome that to this point, but I think at some point that is going to come back to bite you. Um, so for me, I, I think the key matchup for me uh, more than anything is the speed of the Chiefs on the outside on offense against the secondary of the 49ers. Um, because I think the 49ers are fast in the front seven. I think they have great linebackers. They have a great front seven. But the, them on the back end, I don't think it's very, very fast. And I think the Chiefs are elite at, at, in, speed, at, in the speed department anyway. Um, and I think it's going to be very difficult for them to keep up with them. Um, Matt, I don't, I don't know how you feel about that. But I think to me, that is the most intriguing matchup of this entire game. Yeah, it, it's going to be something to watch. I, th I think what I saw a lot from the Niners is once you get them out of cover three, they become really uncomfortable. It's I, I know the defensive coordinator does a lot of good things. With Quan Alexander, I still don't think he's 100%. I, I still think he's battling some nagging injuries, which obviously everyone is this year, but you don't want nagging injuries in your legs and your arms. Those are the two places you prefer not to have them. I... For, for me, can the 49ers make the adjustments to get out of cover three? Because if they play cover three against this Chiefs defense, it, it's going to get ugly. Because what the Chiefs can do is zone creates holes. And they always teach the quarterbacks, hit the holes. Patrick Mahomes is going to hit every pass that you give them on that cover three defense. And then what's scary is, can the 49ers secondary – have open field tackles. I think Mosley is a pretty decent corner, so I think he can hold his own against Watkins. Um, Speed-wise, it's not going to be great. But if, if they play that cover three, you're going to see a lot of dink and duck, and you got Tyree Kill, Watkins, Nicole Hardman, Travis Kelsey, and LaShawn McCoy, who make livings off making people miss tackles. So it's really going to come down to how can the 49ers do open field tackles. The front seven, it's good, but the 49ers aren't going to let you – I'm sorry, the Chiefs aren't going to let you play four down linemen or three down linemen and four backers or three backers. You have to play nickel. You're going to have to play dime against this team or else they're going to shred you with their passing game. And that that's what makes this team so difficult to defend because they take away your pass rush by being able to get pressure with linebackers and defensive linemen. So now you got to blitz a corner. Now you have to blitz a safety. Can the 49ers get home with blitzes? I, I tend to think that Bosa, Buckner, and D Ford can get the job done some of the time. But I, I it's, it's a bad matchup for me. When, when I see the Chiefs offense versus the 49ers inability, how we talk about the back end, now you're making a bad secondary have to go to a fifth corner, have to go to a sixth corner, have to go to three safeties. If these guys were good enough, they'd already be playing over these guys because they're not that good. Defensively, the Chiefs have to, and I mean have to, plug the gaps. We talk about discipline and how this team lacks discipline and they don't stay in their gaps and they get penalized a lot. That's going to kill them. If The game plan for the 49ers need to be, we're going to run the football, 
we're going to keep on coming at you and we're going to pound you. And this may sound crazy, but if I'm the 49ers, I'm the defensive coordinator, I'm telling Bosa, I'm telling D Ford, I'm telling Buckner, hey, keep it clean. But, you know, if Mahomes gets rid of the ball, don't be afraid to take a roughing the passer penalty because they have to hit him and they have to hit him hard to get in his head. Okay with that. <laughs> yeah. He wants Matt Moore. He wants Matt Moore. <laughs> okay with that. <laughs> Henry, what about you? What I mean, what are you looking at? I think um, speed on offense, speed on defense. So it's, it's going to be speed versus speed. Uh, I think this game will be won in the middle for both teams. Um, I think if the Niners do a decent job of shutting Hill down, Kelsey is the key. I think, you know, Jimmy G is going to have some moments where he's going to have to make some big third down plays over the middle to George Kittle. He's going to make them throws or he's not. But I think this game will be won in the middle of the field, which tight end carries their team. And I do think an underrated combination that has been getting a lot of play this postseason, Jimmy G to Kendrick Bourne. Mm-hmm. I mean, talked about every other, but Kendrick Board has been balling his ass off. He's been running great routes. He's been taking a lot of attention off the other receivers. Kendrick Bourne has been doing his thing this postseason. Let me ask you this, Henry. Would you be nervous if I told you tomorrow morning, or I'm sorry, Monday morning, Jimmy Garoppolo threw the ball 45 times? Is that a win or a loss? I think it's a win. I mean, I, it's, like I said earlier, I think – it's the Super Bowl. Things happen that are not supposed to happen. We're supposed to run the ball. So I can see Shanahan just saying, let's throw the ball. Hopefully I get to fill this thing up with some celebratory beverages. <laughs> but, you know, I, 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 I think Jimmy G will have a moment or two to um, make some tight throws, make a couple plays that people will say, okay, we wanted to see that. Quite frankly, he's been doing it all year. When he hands the ball up to say you can't throw it, he's had a couple 400-yard games. They find an excuse why it's okay. You know, Kansas City's defense, when, while the numbers look good, you know, they had, uh, what, uh, eight games where they held opponents to 20 points or less. Six of those games were some bad teams. Yeah. You know, Denver, Oakland twice, you know, Chicago. Well, you know. hold on. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to come at you with that Oakland team, though. That Oakland team – isn't that bad? They, they come at you with a strong Oakland, running game with Jacobs. Oakland in December was horrible. And they okay. spoke Oakland in December 40 to 9. Well, yeah. I mean, it's the number one team in the AFC versus, you know, a but that's my team. point. That, that defense, you know, statistically gets some good accolades. But when you break down the numbers and who they beat and when they beat them, they beat a lot of bad teams and they held a lot of bad teams to low points. So, okay. Know. Well, 49ers against the Buccaneers, 49ers against the Bengals, 49ers against the Steelers, 49ers against the Browns, 49ers against the Cardinals. 49ers against the Saints, 49ers against the Packers, 49ers okay. against the Seahawks twice. I mean, you know. Chiefs against the Patriots, Chiefs against, I mean. Patriot, let's be real. The Patriots, we, we, they were exposed all season. They beat the Patriots 20, 23-16. I mean. It's still yeah. Bill Belichick and Brady, though. And Foxborough. I mean, you know, that that's that's a marquee win no matter how you slice it. It is, it is. But, but they're not the I, Patriots. So. They yeah. get smoked by uh, – who they get? They got smoked by Houston. Yeah. 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 They well, took a loss to the Colts. Which, you know, the Colts they lost to um, – they lost to Green Bay. I think Green Bay put up 30-something points on them. So Yeah, they, they lost a tight one to Green Bay uh, at home, too. Yeah. Two, they both, both teams had bizarre losses at home. At home, yep. teams they should have lost to. Uh, the Chiefs lost to the Colts at home, and uh, the Niners lost to the Falcons randomly towards the end of the season. And the Colts. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, those were just – it seemed like maybe lap, just laps of focuses or something. But uh, teams have shown that they can win big games and, and lose games that they, they probably should win as well. No, but I, I think it's going to be an entertaining game. I think, uh, yeah, I, I've been saying, I, you know, I called the two blowouts earlier, but this one is, is is a field goal game to me. It's a last possession type game. I felt like in the NFC Championship, it was kind of house money. I would have been fine with the Packers or Niners. I actually did take the Niners for the first time in the playoffs, and it worked. Um, but the Chiefs, to me, was so mandatory from an entertainment standpoint because the Titans would have just, like, like Titans-Niners would have just been the worst. Wow. Um, but all of a sudden, with Chiefs-Niners, we've got an intriguing matchup. And my thing is this, and this was actually brought up by a friend when we were talking about the Super Bowl, Super Bowl earlier today. 
you look at the uh, Culpeper Vikings, you look at the Rams, you know, the, the greatest thing on turf, you look at the 07 Patriots, you look at the first version of the Peyton Broncos that played the Seahawks, and now you've got the Chiefs. And every single time we have this unstoppable offense narrative, it's not that they necessarily get shut down in the Super Bowl or in games before that. It's that they can get neutralized because usually the team they're playing in the Super Bowl is going to be pretty good for some reason. Mm -hmm. So yeah. for me, it makes me a little leery that I look at it and maybe this is too black and white and I'm not going too deep, but I look at this as the Niners have been controlling the clock. Uh, I think like Randy said, there's nothing you can really do about it. Like they're going to be able to run the ball, whether they get a hundred yards rushing or 300 yards rushing could be a big factor, but they're going to control the clock. They're definitely not going to be dominated on the clock because the chiefs aren't going to be running the ball like crazy. Um, and if you're dominating the clock and you have this front four that has just been forcing pressure all season long, uh, because of their speed chiefs offensive line i think has been good enough i don't think it's just fantastic line that's going to just shut down everything it's a really bad matchup to me if you're the chiefs and i know that they have a ton of weapons they're going to get their points i agree with that um, but it's a bad matchup to me on both sides because you have this niners team that is the exact blueprint for shutting down narratives like the chiefs They've got this rushing game and they've got the speed on defense and they can get after Mahomes. They can flush them out of the pocket. Now, the one factor, the reason I don't think this is a blowout or some guaranteed win for the Niners is that Pat Mahomes can get out of the pocket and do crazy shit. Like he can, he can throw on the run. He can run on the run. He can, he can do things throwing from angles we've never seen before. So that's the big test to me. But if I'm looking at this strictly from blueprint to blueprint standpoint, I really like what the Niners can do um, against a team like the Chiefs and what we've seen historically. Do you know what's going to happen? What? The, what the Chiefs are going to do, and I guarantee you're going to see at least one of these, they're going to run a middle screen against this 49ers defense. And what's going to happen is that front line and those linebackers are going to suck up and boom, Kelsey's going to go for 20 yards. And then you're going to have those defensive linemen thinking, okay, when's the screen coming? When's the screen coming? When's the screen coming? And you got LaShawn McCoy, who runs a great screen game. The, the, this is not a good matchup for the 49ers. I, I may be the only one that believes this, but you can neutralize pass rushes other than just by blocking. It's happened yeah, in the past. Very fair. Uh, so, I mean, the two, we talk about the Rams, when the greatest show on turf won. They won a Super Bowl, Vince. They beat those Tennessee Titans. So yeah, but then they, they didn't beat the Patriots. I mean, that's well, like that's my point is these teams well, are neutralize and they are neutralized. When, when you record the other team before practices <laughs> well, and you have their signals. Counterpoint: the Titans lost by a yard and a half. So it's, it's not like yeah. they, it's not like that Rams team like really fulfilled expectations either. I think that Titans team was severely underrated because you still have Steve McNair, you still have Eddie George, and you have an excellent defense led by, well, at the time, he was a really smart defensive coach in Jeff Fisher. Yeah. So th th there were pieces there that you said that Titans team was really, really good. It wasn't a bad football team. I mean, but I, they were 15 and three good because like the Niners are really, really good too. So it's, yeah, I mean, I don't want to take anything away from the Niners. I, you know, I've been bashing them all year, and more or less, it's just because of Henry. I got to give Henry shit. Yeah, of but course. um, that I support. The, the the Niners, they can do a couple of things, but I, I go back to the key points, and I mentioned this earlier when we were chatting. Who has more impact players? The Chiefs. Chiefs. It, it, it's not close. Who has the better quarterback? Chiefs. Who, 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 if you had to put your life on it, who's going to score more points? Well, that's a little more complicated because that involves defenses too. Right. Yeah. Not a slam dunk. But we've seen what the Chiefs can do. I mean, they, they can turn on a dime. Like the Tennessee Times were up 17 to 7. Okay. The, they had the blueprint. They were running the football, they controlled the clock, they were doing everything that they wanted to do. Tannehill making key third down throws. And then all of a sudden, Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs are like, oh, wait, we're the Chiefs. Yep. Boom, 28-17 in a heartbeat. 
Yeah, that, that I mean, they that's the thing I was alluding to earlier, Andy Reid as an Andy Reid did himself because they've done like twice now we've seen in the playoffs alone, the Chiefs just go into like <laughs> second quarter, like smash, smash. Uh, Super Saiyan mode. Yeah, it, 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 I, I haven't seen anything like that against playoff teams uh, several times as the Chiefs have done it. But, uh, um, you know, using the last few minutes here, Chiefs one and a half point favorites officially as of right now, um, at least according to the Yahoo spreads. Let's go around. Let's make our predictions. Um, if you have any prop bets out there or any sort of bets rel- you know, revolving around the game, feel free to share those. And let's officially get the word here so far we're one and one 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 you know johnny picked the uh chiefs aaron picked the niners 50 to 7 or mind everyone randy <laughs> we'll again start with you you know give me your score prediction give me any sort of uh extracurriculars here all right so before i get to that to your point vince like i, I don't know the exact percentage but every time a top 10 offense faces a top 10 defense in the super bowl like 90 percent of the time the defense prevails yeah there you go with that said, no, that's it. The Pey- the, like Peyton Manning and the Broncos team, it was not the same physical specimen as the quarterback that the Niners are going to face on Sunday. He could not avoid pressure. He could not make these throws on the run. Peyton Manning was very much an anticipation thrower with a system offense where he could easily be disruptive. That's yeah. why he won two championships and kind of got carried to both of them before being completely out. Anyway, I love Peyton Manning. That's the point. Um, <laughs> I've watched a lot of tape on these two teams. I think it has got the potential to be an all-time Super Bowl. I love this matchup. I love the matchup of coaches. I think they're both offensive geniuses. I love the matchup of defenses. Steve Spagnuolo holds a special place in my heart as a defensive coordinator for obvious reasons. I think he could do the same thing here with the Chiefs, although I do not think they're nearly as talented as that Giants team was. Uh, Robert Sala. Uh, I cannot believe he didn't even get a head coach interview. He has done a great job with the defense. He is a very inspirational guy who gets uh, res- gets responses from his players. Uh, I love seeing clips of him on the sideline getting jacked up. Like he's so intense and so fired up. It, it makes you want to run through a wall. Um, so, Henry, I told you I had a surprise for you. My dear friend Tanner couldn't come on the podcast, but he's the only Chiefs fan that I know. I love Tanner Wolf. He's one of my best friends. He might be in my wedding. Who knows? Um, Tanner, buddy, I am rooting for the Chiefs. However, I got to go with the San Francisco 49ers in this game. I have my Jerry Rice jersey. Yes. That I told you my dad got me. I was yes. My number 80 jersey. Good parenting. Go San Better jersey, too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go with 49ers 28, the Chiefs 27. Wow. That is an all-timer Super Bowl if that's the final score. Yes. All right. I like Henry, we'll go to you. <laughs> Keep the Niner love going. What do you have? Like I said, it's going to be a tight game. I have uh, <coughs> Niners 33, Chiefs 31. <coughs> um, I, I expect a slugfest back and forth, but I'm going, I'm rooting with my guys. I'm popping, I'm drinking, and I will have. My Steve Young color rush jersey. Since they wouldn't let us rock it, I will be rocking it for my team. All right, we're we're three one right now, Matt. Let's uh, let's let's get a counterpoint because I have a feeling you're not taking the Niners. No, I'm not. And I think there's potential. I, I can't see Jimmy G coming and holding his own in this game. I think the 49ers are going to get down big and they're going to start panicking and Jimmy G is going to turn into the pumpkin that I know he is. I'm going to take, take the Chiefs 51, 49 or 17. Wow. Wow. That's like an Aaron. Wow. That's the anti Man. All right. I, uh, I, like I kind of, I kind of touched on it. I, I don't love, I don't love the matchup for the Chiefs. Um, I do, Matt, you do bring up a good point, though, and this is the one thing that I think can give the Chiefs a win. Unfortunately, they haven't seemed to be great early on in games, but if they can score first and take, uh, you know, maybe an early 10 nothing lead or something like that, and you're going to start seeing the Niners in a little bit of a different situation. Jimmy G has to start making some passes as opposed to just casually throwing once in a while, and then you, then you really kind of see what, what the Niners are made of. That said, um, 
it, spread I'm not touching one and a half is uh, that's uh, that's that's a pick them it might as well be um I'm gonna take the Niners 31 27 I don't want to but I'm going to it's just a gut feeling that I have and you know you can look here you can look here I've seen Andy Reid's work for 20 years now <laughs> longer than that 25 years now uh, I'm not taking him in the biggest game of his life against a team that's very fundamentally sound. So it, even if nothing else about the matchups, that's kind of how I feel about it. So I've got the Niners. Um, luckily, I've got a weak buffer before Dong City, so I don't have to hear Henry until then. <laughs> so that, that's where I'm at. <laughs> Henry, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I do not want you to win. Like, I, I am actively rooting against you. <laughs> I am rooting for the. I love Jerry Rice. I picked the Niners, and I love Jerry Rice. We are all mad when it comes to who we want to win this game. It's just Matt's the only one going out on the limb here and saying that they'll actually. My my head tells me 49ers. My heart says the Chiefs. So I went with my head. Who knows how smart I am? We'll find out. I think if the 49ers win, Randy and Taylor should have red in their wedding. (laughs) Do they have red in their wedding? Well, that's beyond my control. So we'll find out in five years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I wanted, I know Vince, you wanted to touch on some prop bets. Mm-hmm. I uh, quickly pulled up. These are the five most bet on prop bets as of 2 p.m. today. Tariq Hill to record the longest reception. Patrick okay. Mahomes to throw the most interceptions. Now remember, these are the most, the five most bet on props. That's at plus one fifty eight. Okay. Cole Hardman to record the longest reception is at plus eleven hundred, and people are betting on <coughs> hard. Take that yeah. one. That, yeah, I'm two that's and the one so far as far as whether I do it. Tyrone Matthew to make the first interception at plus eight hundred. Yep, that's a good one. I wouldn't touch it, but that's a good one. Richard Sherman to make the first interception at plus nine hundred. I also yeah. like that one. <laughs> now some uh some fun bets they have crossover sport prop bets these are actual bets by the way which will be higher james harden total points or the super bowl <laughs> first uh halftime first points james Who's harden, harden playing yeah who are the rockets playing i i don't know it doesn't say or tomorrow then it's yeah sunday. Uh, no it's sunday or yeah so then, right, Sunday the Rockets play the Pelicans. Ooh, no, oh, Zion. And it's in Zion Houston. Shut them down. Yeah. <laughs> then you have uh, another one is which will be higher, Westbrook stat line versus Mahomes passing attempts. <laughs> <laughs> I think Mahomes is going to throw a lot. So <laughs> here's my favorite one: Zion points and rebounds versus Garoppolo's completions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd take Zion. That's not even close. I would, I would take Zion. That's the time, easiest man. money of all for anything. Uh, let me see. His, oh, here's a good one. So uh, one of my, my, my coworkers is big time. In, let uh, me get this one in real quick because it's a uh, life group crossover one. Which will be higher, Joker Oscar wins or Mahomes passing touchdowns? Mahomes passing touchdowns. <laughs> How many did a Joker win? I don't even know. I, we have no win on it yet. I, I agree with Matt. I would take the touchdowns. Oh, touch- yeah. It's gonna be on um, a, what's that? Oh, yeah. yeah. I would take the touchdowns. Oh, Holmes oh. getting six. This is wow. A dozen. We didn't take that many touchdowns. Wow. Wait, wait, wait. This is a good one. Which will be higher? Donald Trump's tweets on February 3rd or the 49ers total points? <laughs> I'll take the Niners points, but that could be close. Yeah. A good one. There's there's three there's any news coming out. There's three bets that uh at work that we're contemplating making. So the over under on the national anthem being sang by Demi Lovato is at 156. Under. I'm slamming the over on that. I think Are she's going to absolutely go over on that. That's um, one of the prop bets I almost always do, and it's almost always under. I feel like, but yeah, I don't know Demi um, Lovato that well. So, and then the football related ones. Uh, Henry kind of spoiled it a little bit earlier, but. Uh, Kendrick Bourne to score the first touchdown is plus 2,500. And uh, Nick Bosa to win Super Bowl MVP is plus 2,100. So if you think it's going to be a defensive game, it could be a Von Miller situation if he forced a fumble or, you know, 
Pat Mahomes like played bad, which I don't think is necessarily a thing. Does but, anyone like, on the, Earth think it's going to be a defensive game? No, but I mean, you throw ten bucks on it. What's the worst that could happen? You know, it's, when was the last time the defensive player won MVP? Von Miller won it just like oh, three years ago. Okay, yeah, he was yeah. the first player since Dent, wasn't he? Well, no, Malcolm Smith won it for the Seahawks uh, against That's the That's right. The I forgot. Larry Brown. Yeah, from I mean, the Cowboys. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, De- was it Dexter Three Jackson against? Uh, stop it. Uh, <laughs> I, oh, oh man. I mentioned him straight hand and Randy died. Yeah, Randy. He <laughs> just went to Giants heaven. Bang, bang, Niner gang, Randy. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> well, all right. Well, we will wrap it up. We're a little over here. Um, so there you have it. We had six total predictions. Looks like four people taking the Chiefs. Uh, or I'm sorry, taking the Niners mm-hmm. and two people taking the Chiefs. So uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Matt, um, are you guys on next week or what's the schedule going forward? Yep, we'll be on next week to recap the season. Maybe a sneak peek at the XFL starts February 8th. Might be more interesting than what people think. Do we have a date? um, We're probably looking at Friday. Okay. Okay, great. Oh, wait. And Vince left. And Vince left, so it's just us two. Um, is there anything else that we needed to cover? Any other uh, news? Any hey, if the Chiefs win, you're coming on the show, Henry. Of course. I'm coming on the show either way, brother. <laughs> All right, man. All right, guys. Well, this has been a special Super Bowl podcast. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy the game.